Shields up, Iron Breakers. Rick on here coming at you with another episode of the Third Fleet Podcast. And today we have a special guest. He is Super Rad, the man who does a lot of history of Monster Hunter videos. How are you doing, Super Rad? Oh, I'm doing so great. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you, dude. And also, obviously, the man, the myth, the legend, Gaijin Hunter. How you doing, sir? Man, I'm just gonna call you Elder Fugen. Going on, you just you just came straight out with it. No no build up, no surprise. Uh, th you, <laughs> the guest you, was you, <laughs> like Basil. This, this is this is the best part because like you did the same thing to me in the Eric's one, and I keep telling you it's gonna be in the title of the video. The first frame of the video, people are gonna see it. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I'm so special. I'm, I, I'm so I am I am hyped. I feel bad because I I woke up late this morning, so I'm a little out of it. But I'm a mm -hmm. big big fan of yours, Super Rad. So I'm super hyped to have this discussion. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's it's so great to be here. I, I've I've watched a couple episodes. They're they're very long, so I haven't watched all of them. But I have watched <laughs> yeah, a couple. Long. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I am very I'm very happy to be here. Thank you guys. So yeah, it um, starts out, we're like, yeah, we'll talk for an hour, and then it's like two yeah. hours later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it happens so often that we st we would start um, we would start the podcast, and suddenly it's like, oh, it's three in the morning. I sh I should go to sleep. <laughs> we need to stop. <laughs> But um, for the people that uh, may not have seen uh, your content, uh, you do, you, Super Rad does fantastic uh, history of Monster Hunter videos focused, focused around the weapons, around the different installations of the game. But uh, tell us in your own words what you do in terms of content. Um, so yeah, it's mostly Monster Hunter content, obviously. Um, it mostly focuses on like the history of the series. I do other stuff other than the history series, but those are like my main videos at the moment. I'll, I'll cover the, I, co I covered the history of the entire mainline series, uh, for each generation. I kind of broke them up in by generation. And I also covered things that were like a little less known in the West. Like, uh, I covered all of Frontier, um what that what the games brought with them how many monsters what areas like I, I go like pretty extensive into into the majority of like my mainline and like my frontier history videos and i'm currently my current project if you will is uh uh finishing covering all of the mainline weapons so all 14 and then may maybe some stuff after that i'm not completely sure and then in, in between that i do like funny little things i like i stream so i do stream highlights or i'll do reviews or i'll do opinion pieces some that get me a lot of flack uh from people <laughs> i can imagine you had that uh that one video where you you just said months on a rise sucks and i was like oh my <laughs> god that's gonna land them in so much hot water <laughs> uh that that one was actually one of my most successful videos and that like that that one's that that one's a joke right like if you, yeah. if you actually watch the video it's a it's a three minute joke uh, that was playing off of some some drama that was happening that day. It was perfect. It was like perfectly lined up because it was April Fools. So I, <laughs> I I had something else lined up, and I was like, oh no no no, okay, no, I know no, exactly no. what I'm gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> so um um, hey Zeus, here's toast is like a is a well known Bloodborne streamer, and he was he oh was yeah streaming I know him. Monster Hunter. Yeah, so he was streaming Monster Hunter, and he got he like he got carded by Ke Kezu like Lorraine Kezu, and he just like turned the game off, and he started like. Um, bad mouthing the game, bad mouthing people that played the game. There, he's like, the game's garbage. <laughs> if you that? like the game, yeah, for real. Um, and, like, he's a nice guy, so I was really surprised because he was like, he's like, this game's garbage. If you dislike the game, uh, or if you like the game, you like bad games. And so, like, if you if you watch my video, it's me recreating what he did. <laughs> oh my god, I wasn't aware uh, that Jesus did that. Oh, man, oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. Jesus yeah. has that effect on people, right? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was so funny. It's like it's a big community meme now. So I was very happy with that one. I, I did a real review though of Rise of like my yeah, thoughts on Rise. I, I actually watched it, and we have a, we have a lot to talk about that as well because there's oh, some, no. Some <laughs> no 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 no. It's like you, whenever I want to talk about things, I actually like having uh, differing opinions because me and Gadget we tend to agree on a lot of things, and I think it's mm -hmm. a lot more healthy to have uh, people on that have a completely different opinion. Because I, I'm of the, the opinion that just because someone has a different opinion from you, it's not like you have to go to war over it, <laughs> so uh, even well, though most of the internet would disagree with that, apparently. Right? I, I, I was going to, I was going to say like, we all probably know that. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I've even had like, I, I was saying earlier before we started recording, like I've seen Gaijin say stuff that I've like been like, oh, I don't necessarily agree with that. And then you have like people coming out of the rafters. That are, oh, like, he's coming. Yeah. Oh shit. Like, uh, uh, he's, <laughs> I grab oh. popcorn. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm like, we're popcorn. friends. Like, what are you talking about? I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm a fanboy of his. Like, why would <laughs> we have no beef? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I was like, I was like, no, like, there's never, there's never any drama. That's like the joke I was, I was saying to Rory Connor. Like, that's the joke. Is like, what's the drama today? What's going on, guys? Like, I mean, there was actually drama today, so <laughs> that was yeah. interesting. Yes. I, w- I, I woke up late. That is the drama th- today. <laughs> but, so. Um, no, I, 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 I mean, to me, your videos have become like my monthly. You do it a lot fat, more than monthly, but I'm a huge fan of Summoning Salt, uh, who does um, speed run. He does like short films about speed run histories, mm-hmm. but it's just, yeah. it's, it's just, it's just that type of wonderful evergreen. That's such a marketing term. The evergreen yeah. uh, videos that that last and will stand the, the tale of time, and I just really enjoy the history of the weapon videos. So oh, I encourage yeah. everybody to check those out. It's um, He goes through, like you go through all the, the history of the weapon. I don't know how you get the footage for everything. Like that's one thing I, I would I'm love assuming to ask emulation. You about. I'm assuming you emulation, right? Well, I, well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to... Uh, okay. I, 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 a, a lot of it's... <laughs> A lot of it's all it's all my own footage. First of all, like it's all I I play yeah. and record everything, um, I, and I also own every game that I'm recording. Yeah. So I'll just say that I've done something similar, and yeah, it's time extensive. So like the effort yeah. you put in there is I could see it, and I'm just like whoa. So you, so for you guys who don't know, the weapon history videos go through the evolution of each weapon from the very first inclusion all the way until the most recent one. It's mm-hmm. not quite a tutorial, but it does talk about all the mechanics, how they've changed, what's been introduced, and they're just absolutely fascinating. So, uh, thank you for making those. Yeah. Thank, thank you for watching them. I appreciate it. And, That's been- and by the way, for those of you either watching or listening uh, on Spotify or wherever you happen to listen to this, there will be links in the description, show notes, whatever, for uh, Super Rad's channel, so that you can go check those out. Um, but yeah, and, out. and recently, by the way. Uh, he did the best weapon. I mean, not the most recent one. The most recent one is a terrible weapon, <laughs> dual blades. He's talking, talking about the long sword. No, no, no. Talking about the long sword. No, 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 no. Long sword? Re- recently, he did the gun lance one, and that was a good one. Mm. Good old yeah, gun that, lance. Uh, you, you were actually a big help uh, with that one, Raycon, because you, your video came out recently, and I, I didn't completely understand how some of the new mechanics worked, so I was able to kind of like uh, check out your video and get a better understanding of it. So, oh, look at that. See, somebody watched my video. So, yeah, so I, I, I just woke the up. Video. I just woke up, so I've not checked Twitter, but did my troll yesterday work or did it just go completely unseen? I tried right. trolling you last night, Ruricon. Oh, Ruricon. You tried so trolling I, me? I, I, yeah, I made a tweet saying, you know, and I was just reminiscing about how I love all the weapons in Rise and which ones in particular are, are tickling me. And I was like, well, this weapon, this weapon, this weapon, this weapon, or ju- there's just something special about it I'm feeling. The other ones I like a lot. I just haven't gotten into them yet. And I talked about all 13 weapons in the game, and I never mentioned <laughs> I the didn't notice that. <laughs> I'm like, awful. I, it was an accident at first, and then I'm like, I'm just going to leave it. Rick, I'm going to be like, wait, wait, wait a second. I, I Where's didn't the gun land? I've, I've been really busy there. I, I recorded like three videos today because I recorded the uh, Yoko Taru history uh, thing that you put up. I recorded a video of oh, that because wow. I thought that thing is hilarious. Um, I, ha- I had no idea what you were talking about with that until I looked at the link. Like I like when you did the Twitlanger, I thought you were like writing a fan fiction. I was like, uh, <laughs> I was like, what is Gaijin doing? Like I, and I clicked it. And I, I was know. like, oh, it's actually translated. <laughs> We should we should talk about that we later. Should, we should, I, I actually, we oh, should shit. we should just talk about it now because we kind of like brought it up, so we might as well just talk about it now. So uh, tell tell us more about the the tweet because you did the translation for Yoko Taro's tweet. Yeah, it just came out of the blue. I just noticed it was trending in Japan and people were talking about it. And there were some articles on some blog sites, and I'm like, you know, Yoko Taro is is hilarious on Twitter, by the way, in Japanese. Mm-hmm. He will just spew out tons of random fun thoughts and ideas and. <laughs> It's usually tongue in cheek and, and just having a good time. And so he he did sort of like a, a twit longer sort of thing where he's like, you know, I'm playing through Monster Rise and you know, here's here's some a story scenario that just pops into my head as I play. And it's it's very dark and very different. <laughs> it's very Yoko Taro. From uh so, from Monster Hunter. Very so I'll just I'll Hunter. just read it because I, I'd love to get your guys' it's so I think some people didn't realize that or they they're not familiar with him. So it's like, don't take this as like, this is my serious thought about how you can remake this story. It's like, this, this is, it, 
typical Yoko Taiwa. So, so he starts out, he says, um, after the tutorial, there's a rampage and the buffled. I love how he calls them by the physical descriptions. He knows their names, obviously. But he says the buffled man acts as a shield to, pr to protect everybody, but he ends up dying. Uh, but it's due to a mistake by the player for the reason why he dies. It's like, oh, okay, that's already so Yoko Taro. He's and then so he, says, um, he says, after that, either the Dango girl or the Buddy Plaza kid dies. Um, <laughs> the one who doesn't falls into darkness and then sets fire to the entire village. And then from that point onward, the chorus of the kids singing in the background of the Buddy Plaza no longer plays. Oh so my sort of god! <laughs> I love how he thought about everything. It's like such little, that, such little details from like Yoko Taru's style. I know. Come into that story. He says uh, the the last boss arrives, but nothing you can do can, will harm it. But you can sacrifice one of the twins and make a weapon out of her that will damage it. You, the player, has to choose which one of the girls to sacrifice. After creating the weapon, there is no longer singing in the village background music. He's so good. Oh, my God. I would play that. That's such a good game idea. <laughs> so I'll just stop really quick here. You know, I'm sorry. You're going. It, it, it's <laughs> funny you say that because someone made a, a comment on your on your thing and they added at me or something. Then uh, this person just said, Rurikan beating the crap out of monsters with Hinoa and saying that this weapon's shelling sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then he says, as all the main characters just gradually die out, they're replaced by like generic, those little generic NPCs walking around the town, and they start, the villagers start to come to the conclusion that it's you, the player, who is like a plague to the village. So they start restricting the items and weapons that they sell you to make the game even harder. What the hell, uh, and th man? Then he says, during a super hard quest, the the monster that you're fighting, all of a sudden, is able to talk to you and speak. And they tell you, the hunter, the true meaning behind the monsters in Kimura Village. And we also learn the reason why our hunter has a voice in this game. <laughs> why? I don't know. He, he, he doesn't, doesn't say? Himself. He doesn't say. No. Then he says, oh, wow. after clearing all the village quests, the village is left completely dead and asunder. You could only play online multiplayer from that point. All the players who have lost everything and everything can only go on killing monsters in this cold and barren world. Enter title screen. I mean, he's a genius. Like it's oh he is God. so funny. I mean, it was a really fast little like fan translation thing that I did, but um, so yeah, but I think his ideas are so funny and so trademarked that no matter how you translate them, you know it's distinctly him. It's mm -hmm. it, you it can was tell. it was funny because like I started reading that and then I read like the first sentence. I was like, no, 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 no. I have to record this while I read it so that <laughs> I actually so that my reaction to what is going on is actually registered. So. Was, There's was, one thing I edited out from his his, his what he wrote because it wouldn't make sense to people. But the voice actor who does Yori, the the kid in the Buddy Plaza, is insanely popular right now in Japan. I think he does the main character on um, that Demon Slayer anime that's hot right now. Oh yeah, Kimitsu no Yaiba. So, Yaiba. So like I yeah. So he used like he said. Um, the character that he plays, and he uses the the, the voice actor's name in his thing. <laughs> he doesn't even mention the character's name, but he he mentions his name, so I thought that was funny, but wouldn't make He's any a... sense to. So, um, who would you pick to die in there? From the first, we, there's two death choices. First one to die: Yori or Yamogi. Uh, Yamogi. 100%. No. Yeah. Wow. For sure. That's the Dongo girl, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> I don't like the Dongo song, guys. <laughs> I made that very wow. clear. <laughs> I know. Everyone gives everyone gives me so much flack for skipping the Dongo song all the time. I'm definitely definitely I mean, getting rid of Yamogi. She's I, evil. She's secretly evil too. Like I don't like. We all know that, right? Like she's clearly got something going on. She's too like ha, chip or whatever the word. Have you is. seen the 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 theories? I don't know how serious they are, but I think it's funny that. I mean. There's hints in the game that she came from like another village and like no one knows her mm -hmm. true history. I think mm -hmm. Rondine's country planted her there to give the entire and they said like to give the entire town diabetes because like everybody <laughs> is just eating sugary dangos and she's just gonna slowly kill everybody. Yeah, that can't be healthy, and she, right? She, and she's like, There's nothing I can do but make dangos and then she whips out the heavy bow gun. Okay, let's get to it. You know, it's <laughs> like oh okay. There's something dark here about this. Yeah. Girl. Those kids are too like those kids are too good at hunting but monsters she's, for their age, man. 
but she's like the best NPC in Rampage. She goes like, it's like so good. Oh my God. I saw a clip the other day where it was, I think it was the Apex Diablos that started screaming or it was the Rathalos. And yeah. she in the background says, oh, shut up. <laughs> And then it got me thinking, I'm like, if they make her a character voice and her whole thing is telling people to shut up and, oh, you're so ugly, like, I'm going to love it. I'm going to use the voice. <laughs> so I, I take it that Gaijin, you would also kill Yori just like me. Oh, he's gone, man. Yeah, like, it, here's here's the thing. I, I, I actually have had several instances where I've wanted to kill him in game because he will not scout <laughs> the palicos that i want and i'm just like i will kill you you're terrible at your job okay no wow. wonder no wonder haman is always so disappointed uh, on you for picking up your buddy searching as your profession because you suck at it okay it's not even just that you're not a blacksmith you suck at what you do yori you're wow. not good but you, you are but you, you, you are need dark, yori you need yori you don't need yamogi you have the in the gathering hub the felines can totally make the dongos for you it's it's apparently the same quality right like it's the exact same same dog. Yeah. getting. So you, yeah. Do they get do they get the ingredients from her or something? Mm, yeah, they, they that, do I because mean, once you once once you clear all the quests though, I think like you've got all the ingredients, so I think mm -hmm. complete all the quests and then you could kill her probably. Yeah, you just kill her <laughs> off, see? So like if you're min maxing your playthrough in this Yoko Taro game, like you can get rid of Yamogi at the end, it won't matter. But you always need Yoro, otherwise you're gonna lose your uh, your buddy plaza. It's yeah, done. this 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 yeah. is true. But I I would still I, kill I would still kill Yori. Sorry, I like your Mogi too much. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking about the meta. I'm just thinking about the meta right now. <laughs> so, and then and then on the second choice, who would you kill, Hino or Minoto? Which one's the sterner Rondine. one? I'd kill Rondine just to make a charm out of her. Just no, to you off. No, well, you, you can't kill Rondine. Ron, That's not an option. Rondine's not an option. Hino or Minoto? Damn it! Oh, Hino is gone, man. <laughs> yep. Which Hino one's the stern gone. one? The stern one is Minoto. Hino is yeah, the one I that get, gives you the village quests. I'd keep Min, I'd keep uh, Minoto. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I keep nice. Minoto That's... too. You want to know why? Why? Because Hinoa uses a bow. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark, man. <laughs> it you, you, is keep, you keep the lancer, is. right? But the bow uses the lancer. Go. <laughs> okay, understandable, valid, valid. I understand. Okay, I so see how it is. I wanted to ask you first, uh, Super Rad, how did you get started with Monster Hunter? What is your origin story? Um, I, it, it, it's always slightly different because I never remember exactly which game I started on, but like the, the story is mainly the same. I basically, um, in, in Canada, we have what's called an EB Games, which is like GameStop for you guys. So the PSP came out. I got PSP like day one. Um, and I got like Daxter for it and I played through Daxter and then eventually I was like later on I was looking for newer games to play and like one of them was like Monster Hunter which had like I think it was Freedom because it had like the picture of uh, Rathalos on it with the greatsword hunter uh, waiting to fight it and so I was like okay I'll try that um, but it must have been like uh, I, I think I tried that one. I didn't get very far in it because I just like 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 we were talking about earlier. I, I just did not understand the mechanics of the game at all, and and I didn't have the <laughs> means of learning how to play it or anything like that. I was very young too. I like when the PSP came out, I must've been in like early high school or something like that. And I, I, I wasn't really like into very complicated games at the time. And then, uh, I, I think I, I think I tried freedom unite and then a Tigrex rolled over me and I was like, okay, now I still don't get it. And then, um, basically I had a friend that I had a, Wii and I had a friend online that was like, you should play try with us. You should play monster hunter try with us. And I was like, Oh, I've played monster hunter. I, I, it's always interested in me. Like I, I thought the concept was so cool. So I was like, okay, I'll try it, but like you gotta like walk me through everything. And then he did. Like we we played through it. I I, I ended up running after I unlocked long swords. I, I ran like a paralysis long sword through like all of hub, which was like awesome. Uh, and uh, from there, I was just like in love with the series. Uh, when once the Wii U came out, I, I bought a Wii U specifically for the Monster Hunter Three U bundle because it came with like a pro oh, yeah. controller and Monster Hunter Three U. And uh, that that was like when I really got into it because I played through all of that like basically solo. So and then I, I recently played through it solo again. <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of fun. So in a way, you're kind of a third fleeter as well. Yeah, I would bit. consider I would consider myself yeah third gen start. Um, I have gone back obviously and played the older yeah. games. Um, not not fully like not all the way through like I have uh, recently, yeah, but yeah. um, but I have like gone back and experienced everything. But I, I would say like my start is third gen basically. Nice. Also, also my favorite like that's like my favorite uh, era of the series. But like you could also attribute that partly to like it being like my main start like what got me into it so do you miss uh cha-cha and kayamba as much as oh. uh, rudikan here 
Oh Cha-chan my god, Kayaba. so much. They are like they are the best companions in in the Thank series. Thank you. Oh yeah. my god, dude. They, oh. Dude, their their utility is like it's funny because like people think I just don't like simplistic stuff uh because like i find like some of the stuff gets simplified in later games um but that's not the case because like chow chow and kyamba are like very simplistic companions you basically just Mm -hmm. need to give them a mask and some abilities that are unlocked you don't have to train them they just level up um but they're they're very useful they have a lot of they have much much more personality in my opinion than felines and um they have storylines behind them uh they're they are so charming and like such great characters They, they they were they're my favorite companions like by far I love Kayamba too. Like Cha 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 and Kayamba. Yeah, I was gonna say Kayamba, best boy. I love mm-hmm, how they yeah. fight like little brothers, and they're just smacking each other and stuff. I, I love them actually. I would give uh, I gave Kayamba the mock Mailinks mask. So in my recent playthrough of Three U, um, I was getting like like you you were watching one uh, Gaijin where I like got like a Wrath Ruby or something like really. Early I was gonna say on. you have to watch his your streams because it, it just gives good luck to everybody. That it day does, you yeah. Will get, you will get gems <laughs> and rubies. That that's so funny. That like blew up as a meme for like so many people. Like I on, on the daily, I will get people like just tagging me on Twitter, being like, "Thank you for the luck. Thank you for the luck. Thank you for the luck. Like, you are <laughs> defeating the desire sensor. Like you are you're you're so good." Um, There's something about this man, I'm telling you. It's like well, rubbing like, the belly of a statue or something before you open up a pack rubbing, of cards or something. Rubbing right? poogie. Like, <laughs> rubbing poogie before you go on a quest because it always gives you good luck. It's 100%. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. I'm sorry. I talk about I, I that. I ask you guys. <laughs> I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel alone here in the community on this one, but I don't care about poogies. I don't even care if they don't ever come back. Am I the only oh, one? Oh, yeah, you are. What the? Yeah. <laughs> what? Really? I never I never really fell in love with the poogies. I mean, I li- he's the mascot. I, I, he's, I, I like poogies. They're, they're food. It's what? Like, the, the, best, the best thing about poogie for me was um, in, in 3 Ultimate, you had these uh, pre-made names that you could give them. And yeah, one of, I know. One of the names that you could pick, it was my favorite thing ever, it was Porkins. Yeah. Because, because <laughs> I think Porkins. I named mine Porkins, too. Because Porkins was the, was the guy that um, he got shot from behind in Star Wars. Yeah. So it's like, I love that because I, I, I love Star Wars. So I was like, I'm going to name him Porkins. He's amazing. Even in World, it's, I called him Porkins. <laughs> it's funny I say this because in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, the Western version, there's a poogie in the town who's called Ivanko, which is my last name. Capcom put it in as a homage to me. Which is really? very kind of them. Yeah. In three ultimate? Yeah. <laughs> wow. They also put oh they God. also put me in as a random cat name in four in also generations as well. Oh, it's so cool. Oh my god. But uh yeah, Poogies though, I don't I don't know. Like the only my only fond memory of Poogies is Village Deluxe, which never came to the West where you could ride them and there's Poogie races mm-hmm. and the cats are riding them, but okay. You played stories, so, right? Oh yeah. Did you collect so all the, the great, poogies? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got the great Poogie, the big one at the end. He's he's yeah. funny, but okay. So I guess I'm alone. <laughs> Just yeah. a bit, like I like I find Poogies to be so charming, man. Like you remember the Monster Hunter uh, G trailer or the commercial series that they ran in Japan that had it was for like the Wii release, and it had uh, it was like it was it was a real pig that they dressed up as Poogie, and uh, <laughs> it was like in a, a real cat that they dressed up as like a palico. And it, it's like yeah, a series of cats. commercials. Yeah, th- th- those are like so charming to me. And like ever since I like saw those, like Poogie was like very charming to me. And like I, I obviously also believed that petting the Poogie raised like your luck or something. I thought it worked <laughs> as like lucky cat, which like I mean that was such a long running rumor, man. That like people just like yeah. Pet the poogie, and, get better luck. Yeah, and like, and like, uh, I, like the love is there because it, it, we like there was such an uproar in world. You know, people, people just think like Poogie was just in world, like there was no like day one patch or anything like that. Like I, it blew my mind that world is so old now that they were just like, no, Poogie was in world. You, because I'll, be, I'll be like, oh, you know, Poogie wasn't originally in world. They'll be like, no, Poogie was in world. I saw Poogie, and I was like, no, 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 like he was patched in. Yeah, yeah, there was a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that you guys missed. And, and I'm probably the only one. I I constantly like Yuna loves Poogies as well. So when she was playing through Iceborne, I'm like, here, let me let me see the controller. I know where there's a hidden item, and I brought it right over to the stew pot. <laughs> yeah, and I laid it down, and it screams and runs away like you're gonna cook it. And she's like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> unlocked a unlocked an item. Will you get costumes uh, for that? I think something, but she was not very happy with me. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it's so funny. 
the the friend that got me into into Monster Hunter because I also had a friend that kind of like walked me through in, in Freedom Unite. He also believed the thing of like, oh, you got to rub the pig for good luck. So every single quest we ever did on Freedom Unite, first thing we always did was go over there and rub the pig. And then I I, <laughs> I passed that knowledge on to another friend of mine that I got into the game in Three Ultimate, that's, and we would also go to rub the pig before the quests every time. That's how it happens, man. Like you just uh it's it's word of mouth. Monster especially cuz Monster Hunter was so niche back then you would only hear about it on forums and talk about it on like, game facts and there was nobody there was no way to like really check at the mm. time data mining wasn't a thing. People weren't like like breaking into the game and like checking all that information and stuff like that. You had no idea. It was crazy. Here's a question for both of you guys cuz I'm curious. Um so starting with like with the western version of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate they changed the flagship monster on the cover to Azure Rathalos instead of mm -hmm. Bracadios. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious, because they changed the color for the West, did Bracadios come off as the flagship monster to you guys? Or did he not? Now he does. Like, now I know, right? But the impression is... At the, the time, no? No, like, if you're, if you're new to the series especially... You yeah. have no idea. You think, okay, Jurathlos is the flagship. And in fact, people still think that. I still get like many people coming up to me or like while I'm in stream and like they're they're chatting with me and they're like, they're like, they'll be like, oh, like is Jurathlos is the flagship, right? And I'll be like, no, it's Bracky. And they'll be like, oh, well, he's not on the cover. And I'll be like, I know. Like, let me tell you again. Like, why? <laughs> that is I the actually, case. Oh, wow. I actually didn't have the um, the physical edition. I got um, I got the digital edition for Three Ultimate, and I actually mm -hmm. did think that Bracky was the one because of the cinematic, the star yeah, where the Bracky intro, shows yeah. up. Yeah. So I I thought mm -hmm. he was the flagship for for that one. One of one of the so, best and, cinematics. Look, yeah, it looks it's really amazing. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but then it gets me to the other. I guess the, the second half of the question is how did it feel going because Monster Hunter Four was not released in the West. If you didn't import it, then you would have played Fall Ultimate. So you had two flagship monsters then. You had uh, Gore from 4, and then Sergios was the, the flagship from 4 Ultimate. How did I? Gore is so integrated in the story. I imagine he came off as the flagship monster, or did both of them sort of get the spotlight thanks to the cinematics? I think in that one, Gore is like... Gore. Yeah, but because like they gave us like... Didn't they give us the four? Did they give us a four ultimate cinematic or the four cinematic? Because I remember only seeing Gore Magala being fought. I think you're being chased. I think the guy's being chased by a Tigrex, and then it's Gore Magala with like a insect lady. Oh, user that's a good a, question. I never thought about that. I think like because we had a different intro for Fall Ultimate that was with Seregios. Yeah, we don't. We didn't have that. I don't think. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we had that one. Wow. Yeah, so they, they, they really wanted to make you think it was just Gormagalus. Regius is kind of like an extra thing. Like like now, like like we all know how the flagships work, right? So we, we yeah. know what's gonna be the flagship, what's not. But somebody that's new to the series, it, unless they do it properly, like they'll they'll think that Jurathalos is the flagship of Tri or Three Ultimate, sorry. And uh and I guess Lagaya Cruz did look come off as a flagship, like he was on the cover for, for Tri in, yeah. in the West. So yeah, L Lagi was definitely the the flagship because like I remember I bought um th this was the worst thing because like uh, I I asked this friend of mine the one who was into Monster Hunter before I bought Monster Hunter I was like so is this game good am I gonna like it it's like are oh, you gonna love it and I hated it but uh, yeah. <laughs> I I bought like the the special chest edition that came with like a controller and it also oh. had like the the little the little bust oh, of nice. uh, of Lagi so yeah that oh. that uh, that definitely came off as a. Uh, I got my uh, I got my la laggy Ooh, statue here. Damn, yeah, love one of my favorites. That's Actually, I, I was showing it off to Ruri as you joined Gaijin, but I recently got uh, I still have the box for it. But this is like a it's specifically oh, wow. a Japanese uh, Monster Hunter Three G bust of Azure Rathlos. I was so happy to get nice. this. It was so amazing. <laughs> very, very happy. I have them like on display over here at all times. To geek so out I guess I'll br I'll bring us back on topic, but uh, but that was cool to hear. But so, wh where did you go from for so f Monster Hunter Try? Uh, I guess or Wii U was your big first huge jump into Monster Hunter, and I guess yeah, third uh, gen was my biggest jump, or like like my that was getting me into it basically. And then um, when it came to, I I played through a lot of try and three ultimate and then i was like i want to play something new i want to play like a new monster hunter and i heard like i would hear about portable third but we didn't 
we didn't get portable third. So like yeah. I would always be seeing online that I didn't know how I could play it or anything like that. Cause I had a PSP and I was like, do I import it? I don't even know how to import stuff yet. I'm like, I'm very young. Uh, and then eventually like they finally announced and then like I heard about monster hunter four and I was like, okay. And they finally announced monster hunter four ultimate. So, um, I was, I was basically just, uh, counting down the days for four ultimate to come out. I, I met one of my best, uh, friends through three ultimate actually. And we were just like counting down the days because he worked. I lived in a house with a roommate and my roommate worked with this random guy who I'd never met before. And he brought this guy home to like hang out. And the guy, I was like in the dark of my bedroom with the door cracked open, just sitting in my computer chair, just like grinding like Jen Moran or something. And the dude just like bursts open my door and he's like, is that Monster Hunter? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. He's like, yo, that game's sick. And we've been like best friends since then. <laughs> it's so funny. That's yeah. freaking awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, it's great. Um, it, it's it's it was so funny too because like we we counted down the days for Four Ultimate. Once Four Ultimate was out, he would just always be in my house playing it with me, and it was great times, great times. I love Four Ultimate too. That was, that was a great experience. For Four Ultimate, we we were just discussing it um not in, in the in the last podcast about how it has such a unique story, the journey through all the multiple villages. It's probably like the best uh, traditional monster hunter because not counting stories obviously but the best traditional monster hunter story because that was so fantastic there's just that sense of adventure and your ship would get modified it's like oh now we're going through the ship oh, and, yeah. the, and now we're going to get the balloon on top of the ship and whatnot and the little animation with the drill in front whenever you're in the loading screen is so good it, it had so much character to it i, I honestly exactly. think out of like any of the games um it might not have been my favorite style overall before you definitely had some of like the best character and like storytelling um even even compared to monster hunter stories like stories had a great like story but like <laughs> you know <laughs> it's in the name uh but uh for you had an amazing like progression system and storyline that we hadn't really experienced in a monster hunter yeah. game yet so 100%. that that was a, that was a nice treat i think that's why i left such an impact on a lot of people so I um, I noticed in a lot of your videos that you talk about the quality of life features of the uh, newer Monster Hunter, and I wanted to bring mm -hmm. that up because that that is definitely like a, a point of contention I feel from a lot of people in the community. Because even with um, Monster Hunter World, there were a lot of Monster Hunter veterans that when World came out, they were like, "This isn't Monster Hunter. I don't know what this is. This is not Monster Hunter. It's completely different." So mm -hmm. how do you feel about some of that stuff? Because I know that you have some strong feelings in regards to that. Uh, I mean, I've, I've talked about it. Like in, uh, in my, when I first started making videos, one of the first videos I made after like I got through some of the history videos was I made an opinion piece on world. I basically wanted to look at like from the lens of somebody that really kind of like preferred old school Monster Hunter. Like I, I had, pre I still to this day prefer playing the older games over the newer games, but that doesn't mean I don't like the newer games, right? Um, yeah. So I was like, I, I was basically just saying like, hey, is like, this is a Monster Hunter, like, don't get me wrong, it is a Monster Hunter game, but is it a good Monster Hunter game? And I, I came to like a conclusion in there. Um, one that I don't even know if I like necessarily like fully, I didn't like, I, I don't know if I fully agree with like what I came to with my conclusion in that video, but it, I, and I could articulate it better. I'm like a much better like video maker now, but um there are things about I, I look I look at Gen 5 as a separation from Gen 4 backwards almost um, in the same way that I feel like we used to look at uh, Gen 3 as a separation from Gen 2 backwards. There, there was a there was a big jump there, but I feel like the changes made in new school um, are so vast and, and, and like so different that you're almost playing almost a different game. It's still it's still Monster Hunter, but it, it, it's, it's almost a completely different series. In my opinion, it just has the. Uh, it has some of the monsters. It has the weapons and stuff like that. But there, there's these changes overall that give you a new experience. And it's not a bad thing at all. But it's not it's like it's fine to do that. It's fine to progress. It's fine to try and uh, bring in new people, uh, which which they have done successfully. Definitely. But uh, it, it, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted. And I and I and I I, I looked at that with that world video. Right. But then. I came out with my rise review and the point of my rise review was to take like, okay, everything that they did with world that they have built upon with rise to ju just look at it as building upon from world, you know, like uh, gen five into something new from gen five. Did they do it better? Did they do it worse? And then stuff that is still from old school, see like what they did with that. 
and people still got mad about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, people are always going to be mad about it. Like, you, you need mm-hmm. to understand. Like, um, I don't know if you know uh, Dark Hero. He did, he did a lot of like Monster Hunter meme videos. Dark Hero CC. Uh, I think I've seen him. You you probably you probably have. Um, yeah, but yeah, Dark Hero at one point, like he he had been doing a lot of world content. Um, and I and I I speak a lot with uh, Dark Hero because he's also Portuguese. So he mm-hmm. was doing a lot of um, world content. Then at one point, there was this other game that came out that he wanted to play. He was curious about it, which is um, God Eater 3, which is also oh, kind yeah, of like yeah. a hunting type game and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he made like one or two videos on God Eater 3 and people friggin' slammed him into the dirt. You betrayer. How dare you? Well, how, why would you play this garbage game? And I was like, Jesus, he, he literally stopped making videos for God Eater 3 because of his comment section and i was like wow that is you, you insane can get, you can you can get so much backlash for that kind of stuff man like um like like j- just just to go back on like what you were asking me like for for quality of life and stuff like that i i am uh, i do get a lot of comments and stuff from people where they're like oh you just don't like change uh you're a boomer i'm like 20 i'm 28 <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm I'm a boomer. You apparently. boomer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, they there's this there's this term people use for uh, Pokemon fans that are stuck in Gen One. They call them Gen Oneers. I guess I've I don't I don't follow, follow Pokemon enough to to care about that. But they they'll call I'm me a Gen Oneer. They call me they call me a Gen Oneer for for Monster Hunter, which is funny because I started in Gen Three. So, <laughs> um, but I don't have problems with quality of life improvements necessarily. I think it is fine to make a game more accessible to a larger audience. My biggest issue um, that I, I have criticized Monster Hunter for, um, and I've criticized especially Rise for a couple of things, uh, but one of my biggest issues with Gen 5 is this design choice to remove certain things in order that they that they might have just considered chores or or um, something that like want some of the preparation aspect of the game. That, that's probably like my biggest thing. When, when it comes to Monster Hunter, I feel like a big aspect of the game is preparing and like getting like see, being able to see if something's capturable and like being able to find it on the map and stuff like that. Those are things you should have to prepare for. You should have to bring Oracle. You should have to bring such and such. Um, I And like people will always say when something like that gets removed, they'll be like, oh, and like if, if you voice like, oh, I, it kind of sucks that that got removed, they'll be like, oh, it's just one thing. It's, it, it, it's just one thing that they got rid of. But it's always going to be like just one thing. And then it's it's, yeah. it's, it's it was that it was. Being able, now you can go to your camp when you're out on a map. Now you can see the monster at all times. Now you can see the capturability at all times. Now you don't need hot drinks and you don't need cold drinks. Like nobody liked cold drinks or hot drinks that much. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna die on the hill of cold drinks or hot drinks, but look at it as a whole, right? Like we're we're losing all these little things that kind of like made Monster Hunter what it is. So it slowly changes the face of the game. And that's generally what I was trying to bring to light when I would talk about that kind of stuff. That's why I like old school a little bit more because I feel like it has this charm that we no longer have. It's still a charming game over here, but it's just not yeah, yeah. this game over here anymore, which is fine. Yeah, me and Rory, kind of, we talked about this actually on a recent podcast where I think the way that I viewed it was that the game is moving more towards the action genre than the hunting genre. Absolutely. And, that, and then the fact that you know it made... It, the way I rationalized it myself, because I still the, the charm of the older games is something that I, I adore, mm-hmm. is that we were not superhumans back in the older games. Like we are superhumans now. We are like Marvel superheroes. Oh yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Where before, like you know, our hunter having to have drinks or or stop to cook meat and eat, it all made sense. Like it had a very cohesive feel to the realism and the immersion. And mm-hmm. I think as they started bringing the hunters towards more superhuman levels. I can see why that other stuff started falling off because it, it started feeling weird. It's just mm-hmm. a different direction that they're taking the series. And I guess I'm just going to assume that they took it that way because it's easier to expand on it as a franchise. Um, it's also very popular. Like, yeah, they, it is. Yeah, it really the worked West, for them. It really worked. Yeah. And I think the first adventure into that was with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, actually. Even then, there were some people who were like, oh, my God, why is there jumping and mounting? This isn't Monster Hunter. Like, why mm-hmm. are we able to do this? And it was it that was the start, so to say, right? You could see the mm-hmm. planting the seeds of of this is turning more into an action game. And my first thought was, wow, this is going to be perceived much better in the West now because it's it's more of an action game than it ever was. 
And then World just dialed that up to like 11. Uh, before, and Rise is dialing that up to 12. So Before World, For You was the most uh, popular launch in the West. Even after mm-hmm. like Generations, because people didn't adhere to Generations as much as they did For You. And, and I can mm-hmm. understand why. Generations did a big mistake with the uh, redonkulous amount of fetch quests that you had on the lower ranks. Like it was... It was ridiculous. I spent more time playing as a prowler, not because I wanted to, but just because, like, well, I don't have to use, you know, pickaxes or gathering things or whatever. I just pick everything up, not even care. Yeah. Um, G- Generations did have a really, it, it did have a lot of trouble with, like, their quest selection. Like, there was yeah. so many, and it was it was a very yeah. mis- mix-matched set of key quests that you had to do. Like, you had to, like, backtrack a little bit, which was really annoying for people. Um, I, w- I would say, like, Generations is like the like rises a natural progression from generations when it comes to actual gameplay, like with the styles and the hunter arts yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um so it was kind of cool to see. I like I will say like Rise like tried to like bring back the life of like some of the old school experience, which I really appreciated. And I, I yeah. talked about that actually. Um I'm Ichi knows. But it is still like a fifth a gen game, yeah. It's still a fifth gen game, but like Ichi knows they like knows what he's doing. Like I mean they both know what they're doing, but R- Riozo has like He's like, I, we are progressing the series through fifth gen. And then each knows he's like, how can I make a portable game within fifth gen? <laughs> you know, and I, yeah. I, I think he did a really good job. Um, there, there's obviously issues that I think like I, I one of my main issues um, with Rise is like, you're so fast. You're so crazy, yeah. superhuman, fast and nuts. And you can Spider-Man everywhere. But some of the monsters are like maybe a little bit faster, but still pretty much just like the normal monster. So now, now you're just plowing through them because you are a god. Um, but then there's, but there's certain monsters that shine me with that. Like Magnamalo is amazing. Like yep, Magnamalo yeah. is such an amazing fight because he keeps up with you. He can fly. You can fly. <laughs> like he has all these amazing heavy abilities. Even Tiastro was really good for that one. They, they, they upped him a lot. I found, uh, found him a lot more enjoyable in this one. So, yeah, it makes me wonder what they're going to do with sixth gen. Are they going to dial it back a little bit and go a little bit more for a little bit more of a at home rustic kind of more immersed type of restricted type of gameplay a little bit more classic or are they i don't i guess i don't see how they dial the action up even higher at this point i, I mean, know it's it's pretty, it's pretty much, crazy right like they have to like <laughs> devil may cry it or something yeah, that, that's what we that's what Stylish we said rankings. The, that's, that's what we said in one of the podcasts as well it was like if you go any faster you go to devil may cry, devil <laughs> yeah, may cry. Yeah, yeah. it's no longer monster hunter it's devil may cry at that yeah. point but uh, but you know i i i think i share a lot of your feelings as well i made a video called i miss classic monster hunter and i still get hate comments every week on that one i remember that um, one yeah i'm not surprised that you get that that's <laughs> people hate when you say i like old things like yeah <laughs> i know and well Boomer. people have problems you say like well yeah. you know this isn't when people when you say like you know this is an issue for me it's like that's totally fine people think that oh my god he's saying that we all need outcry it's an issue for all of us it's like no you can have issues for you and there's certain things that you know like the checklist of those things that that mean meant a lot and then were just more preferable yeah i'm lucky in that the biggest ones for me were actually reconciled with rise so i'm actually very happy with it okay. where I, th- I can see why some people are still kind of like yeah that you know they're still moving away from those core f- principles that i loved mm-hmm. um me i, I just I, I missed i missed that one-on-one arena feel um the clutter of the maps of the world really uh took me out of that where it was like, oh yeah it was like a boxing boxing match you versus monster and it's like ha ha people you get know. so mad at me for liking the hits for liking the like the loading zones like I, i'm i'm completely fine with how rise did it like rise rise because like i can i really criticized like world's map design i thought it was like fairly like condensed and convoluted and hard to get around um and then i rise, loved world's maps i, I completely disagree <laughs> I thought how can you really how can you defend ancient forest man that ma- that map is like i love the maze it, it was one of my favorite maps the 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 cool thing about it was the fact that it was a maze there were so many places oh that you my. would actually Particularly because like Azure Rathalos would have this one spot that I think only he would go like under the Anjanath's uh, sleeping spot or whatever. He would go there and it would be one of the few monsters that you would fight there. And it was cool. And I like the the, the, the little uh, traps that you had, like you could break the waterfall and bring them down. That is cool. Rocks. Like that was That's really cool. cool. I love that. And interactive maps are cool that's yeah. great i just i i had like uh i felt like i was lost a lot of the times some people said like oh well like that's part of the hunting experience that's part of the preparation experience is learning the maps and like i mean we all learned the maps 
But uh, I think, I, honestly, I think like Rise did it. I think the Rise maps could be a little more interactive, if anything. Yeah. But like they they did. I really like how they like they kind of meshed both together. Like they they were like, how yeah. can we have like these big nice open areas, but like have the map be simplistic at the same time and kind of give that Monster Hunter feel? And I think I think they did a really good job. Yeah. I I still I was prefer. Really surprised with um. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you. <laughs> okay. No, I was just say I was talking. I I find it fascinating to pride my daughter for her thoughts because mm -hmm. one, she's she's young, she's just twelve, um, and she often has a very, I want to say prolific, but a very clear idea of something. Right, like she'll see something in a different light than I will because I'm probably overthinking it. Mm -hmm. And so I asked her as, as she started with World, right, uh, and she just like me have has says the had said the f word more than once when it came to the ancient forest. <laughs> and getting lost and this the, you know the, the bugs couldn't find their way around or whatever and i asked her as we were playing rise i was like this is so much better like i just like i man i hated the ancient forest that was crap and she's like huh i'm like well you got frustrated as well she's like yeah but it was unique mm. i'm like okay so she she says she prefers rise but she has a fondness for the she can appreciate the uniqueness she's like I've never seen that in any other map. The, in, the, the intricacy and all that. She's like, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm like, well, you got a point. Everything's yeah. got their their ups and downs. So I was like, that was interesting for me because I thought she was gonna be like, yeah, we got lost all the time. And she's like, but that was kind of fun. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I I I kind of agree with uh, with her opinion on that, which is basically like, I still love the maps and world. I still prefer the ones in Rise because they do let you focus more on the monster. But I think it was by design. Like the, in World, the world was almost the character in and of itself, which was kind of like yeah, part that, of the appeal. It, it is, and that's that's what I didn't prefer. I preferred it when it was a boxy match between me and mm -hmm. the monster, which we can't we get now. We get like a nice immersive open world, but we still get well then and we also got back, of course, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one, which is we're getting back the aggressive small monsters. Like you walk Jesus. in that little arena and the small monsters are like, I can take this guy. <laughs> Dude, the I have, but, how many <laughs> I have nothing but bad things to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially because I'm playing through Portable Third right now, man, and oh my oh, god, man. Portable Monsters are so aggressive. It is ridiculous. <laughs> Those Bullfangos are like, yeah. <laughs> Bullfangos aren't that bad in this one, I will say. Like they are aggressive, but they they are not like not nearly as bad. Yeah. Well, now they go after the monsters missiles. as well, like hardcore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I like. I'm like, okay, like at least something. At least it's more interactive that way. It's more immersive, I guess, would be the word for it. But <laughs> it's, they were um, horrible. But they're homing yeah. so missiles. It's just so funny for me whenever you start like a Magnamalo quest and just as you're getting up to the Magnamalo, there's a Bullfango in there and Bullfango, he's like, you know what? Yeah. You know what, Magnamalo? I can, <laughs> I can mess yeah. you up. <laughs> and just go up against Magnamalo and just like, what are you doing? <laughs> you crazy monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have, they have no fear. Like no fear whatsoever. And the, It's the, hilarious. I, I think the most They're, they're like, I will be reborn in three minutes anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most annoying ones for me are definitely the Roggies because those bastards like I'll be fighting something like a Nargakuga or whatever and he'll just like walk right up to me like bah! get poisoned I was like what the <laughs> yeah, hell I dude? know like, I didn't even bring antidotes for those <laughs> well, well they needed they needed a way to justify having the carving pro skill and I think that's what it was because man will they mm -hmm. interrupt your carving mm -hmm. yeah they're very annoying for that I love how like the human nature is like when you get interrupted by a Roggy when you're trying to carve is to just try to ignore them and say, okay, now I can get it. And like, it's not, <laughs> it's not in our nature to just kill them right away. We, we try like two, three times and then we're like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm yeah. killing you. <laughs> now you're going to die. I and hope then you're you happy. And then you carve uh, and you're just like, oh, why didn't I just do that in the first place? That, hap that happened to me. I guess it shows like, that we're, we're, we're good people. The yeah. People <laughs> More, I that happened to me last night where I was, I was streaming and I was, I was, being, I just kept getting juggled by a bullfango while I was trying to hunt like an argakug, and I was like, "That's it!" And I just, <laughs> just put it in the ground. I was like, "You're done. That's it. No more." I love, I love the um, Herney's video where he's he's talking about like the the demo, and then he walks up to the the little section uh. of the ruins that's got bullfangos. Like, oh, this game's got bullfangos in it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that's, that's so, so funny. Good.
<laughs> but um, on on the topic that we were talking about previously, I also agree with the um, the preparation aspect. I talked about this when they initially confirmed that there weren't going to be um, cold drinks. Cause, no, wait, it was hot drinks. The first one that they confirmed was hot drinks. They didn't talk about cold drinks, but obviously everyone inferred. I mean, no hot drinks, no cold drinks doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, I brought up the the preparation aspect as well because I do feel that we are losing things. Like Rise is still my favorite Monster Hunter of all. Like I, I really love Four. I loved World. World's amazing to me because World was like the first worldwide release, so I have very fond memories because that was kind of the game where I started actually creating content for it, and I was yeah. always super pumped about it. Uh, but Rise is now definitely my favorite because I, I just feel like a lot of stuff is better done in rise uh the the clutch claw doesn't feel nearly as solid as the wire bugs it just feels better it's also the best implementation of the gun lance ever pretty much from any game the gun lance is just like to me the most fun weapon by a long shot it's not the best weapon in terms of damage but you just say that because you can blast dash off a mountain and go across the map <laughs> blast dash go <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> No, but it's like you sh- you should see my playstyle with it because it's hilarious. Like uh, my my favorite playstyle with the gun lance is not even the meta one, which meta is ground splitter because it buffs your shells and whatnot. But like I will just mm-hmm. blast dash like three times because you can adjust the direction you're blast dashing in. It's like the monster will be in front of you. I'll blast dash at an angle to the left because he might attack directly in front of you, and then I'll blast dash at an angle to the right. And if the monster hasn't moved, I'll attack. But if he has moved, I'll blast dash in the direction that he moved. And then if he happens to be a flying monster, I'll shell in the air and everything. It's, it's so beautiful. It's like shelling stuff of off in the air. I just thought of a way to to describe that. You are an insect glaive user born in the body of a gun lance. Oh my god. <laughs> No, that's, I, you use it like an insect glaive. That's insulting. I, I prefer I prefer what my chat says. They say that I'm Volstrax, and I'm like, yeah. Volstrax? <laughs> I'm Volstrax. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's probably a nicer way of thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, so I, I wanted to really bring um, bring us towards the, the maps a little bit more to talk about um, which one do you actually prefer? Because I know that Gaijin prefers uh, the open maps, but if you could pick... To have open maps or the old segmented maps, which one would you choose? Oh, um, it it it's hard to answer that. Like, it is. Yeah, because are we talking about like, are we talking about having segmented maps with like the current game's design, with like how we drink potions and how we sharpen and how we have palamutes and stuff like that? Because I don't think it would work as well, but. Like like the, the segment the segmented maps actually complemented the old school game design, but then because they had the open maps, because they I think they wanted the open maps, um, they were able to have more freedom in how they redesigned certain things like potion drinking and and other stuff. So it, it it's hard to imagine kind of like playing World or Rise with the segmented maps because it wouldn't uh, be the game so much the game so much more fluid almost. Than uh, old school, I, I I personally would say like I like old I like old school more, so I like the segmented maps more. Um, some people find that so insulting <laughs> when I say that. Well, no. the thing is, I, I I the way I look at it is that Rise is a mix between the two, right? Because mm-hmm. there are se- the, the maps are segmented, like the way that they introduce the the safe zones, the mm-hmm. like the little gray areas in between each area where you can go, mm-hmm. you can heal, you can do stuff. That to me f- makes it feel like they are segregated, um, mm-hmm. in a good way. So to me, it's like the perfect mix. Where World was like nowhere is safe, like in, yeah. in Rise, there's always little areas you can go to to heal up, to collect, and big monsters can't follow you there. And that so it does sort of create that a nice mix. I think. I, I think I think least. Rise. Did, I, I yeah I think Rise did a good mix of it. I think like if you look at the gray zones as like safe zones, and like also you can just like run away from monsters in this one. Uh, with your palamute and stuff like that so and you can like you can like sharpen on your palamute and everything so it's like basically like zone hopping um i i I would say you wouldn't be able to do it in world you wouldn't even be able to like do segmented areas in world and have it be enjoyable but you you could probably do it in rise and uh i i think i'm fine with how rise did the maps i think i would be fine with like the open maps right now in rise like yeah. if they brought back segmented maps, I wouldn't complain, but it, it wouldn't be as fluid mm. with how Rise is designed. 
It's like the the reason I like to bring this up is because I I I think I prefer open maps. I think you know because you just kind of like get used to it, right? And it's just a big quality of life thing. But I do yeah. think that we lose one key aspect with open maps, and that is the illusion of how big the map is. Like you look at a map from one of the previous games, right? And you have all of these segmented areas, and you have the the sky boxes and the backdrops, and it gives you this illusion. The map is not bigger. As a matter of fact, it's probably smaller than the map in Rise because you just have different arenas spread. But there is this illusion and the immersion that you get from it that like, wow, this is a massive friggin' zone and whatnot, and we're traversing through it. It's crazy. So that there is something that is lost in having the open maps in in in, in World and Rise. I'll it's tell you what's lost. What's lost is what's lost is carding at the top of the volcano and taking sixty five seconds to get back into the hunt. <laughs> take take that. What's take gone? The, pop a dash juice. Pop a dash juice. Run over. It, it'll still take you a minute. That, yeah. Well, that map yeah. Is, oh my god. What are you doing at the top of the volcano? Are you hunting Agnactor? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, Agnactor. <laughs> <laughs> like a Teostra goes up there, right? Oh yeah, true, true, true. Teostra. The old, the old um, volcano was uh, upsets me, but the thing I like about the open maps, though, and it's it's just something that it kind of takes away all the other concerns I had was the fact of how how many times I'm in awe that I can see everything going on. I can't believe they pulled that off on the Switch, yeah. let alone. Like I'm all around and I can see everybody else over here like fighting while I'm at the camp and I'm and I'm preparing. I, that's so immersive to me to be able to see all that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Well, I was actually surprised, uh, Rory Khan, with what you said about the the sense of scale because I think Rise actually makes the maps feel very like very large, especially since you can climb to the top of them and you just like see yeah, so far out. Like it really feel they really feel huge to me. I th in comparison to uh, previous games. I think the the problem is the amount of hours that I played of the demo. So Shrine Ruins to me almost feels like yeah. just a, a <laughs> tiny little bedroom now because we, that's, we that's ran true. so much of that. The other maps feel mm -hmm. great though. Like Sandy Plains does feel friggin' huge, uh, which I didn't think was going to be the case. But, um, they, you know. They, they, go ahead. They did Sandy Plains so well. They did Sandy yep. Plains mm -hmm. so well. I don't think they did Flooded Forest as well, at, like at To Justice for third gen, but I think that they did Sandy Plains really well. Like I, I went to so many locations in Sandy Plains. I was like, oh my God, I'm here, I'm here. Here's the Jaggy Den, here's like this area. There's the cactus that the Diablos will eat, you know? Like all, all the little nuances and stuff. Uh, I think I think Flooded Forest could have just used a, like, a, like a, a tinge of more charm and I would have I would have really liked it, but Sandy Plains, I was like, I was like, Mwah, chef's kiss, done, super great. I think what, area. what bothers me the most about Flooded Forest is the color. Like, I get that they're going for a certain vibe, but Jesus Christ, I'm, I almost get depressed every time that I'm hunting in flooded forest during daytime because it's it's just yeah. brown. It's like a big brown tint on top of the well, hasn't it always Hasn't it always been like that, though? No, no, no. You, would, you would think so. You would no. think so. But if you, especially if you go to flooded forest at nighttime in third gen, yeah. it's so bright and colorful. The sky is this beautiful shade of like green and teal. And it's just, mm. it's so bright and perfect. Like I like it color color wise. I think third gen did like some of my favorite. Yeah, and like yeah. it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Interesting. I, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it, so I my memory is all messed up. But uh, I I wouldn't have been mad. So like I'm not mad, but I wouldn't have cared so much about Flood of Forest being brown and gray if like Shrine Ruins wasn't already like brown and gray. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like yeah. Shrine Ruins was like that. You would you would think they would put more color into uh, Flood of Forest, but then. Like like I said, Sandy Plains kind of like blew everything out of the water for me. It's like one of the best areas in that game for me. Yeah. And uh, the the new Frost Islands is pretty good too, just because of like the uh, not architecture, but like the the geology. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the landscapes with the monster yeah. fossils yeah. and stuff. It looks really cool. Uh, so I really like that area too. And I really like the uh, the little uh, slug monster that's all the way up in the lake. That that's a really cool addition in Frost Islands as well. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. the thing Have you waved hi to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they got right. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. They they did a lot of charming stuff with the ecology or the the what would the word be endemic life. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Oh my they god. Did. You just said ecology. I have to bring this up. So um, I've played through Rise entirely in Japanese, right? Because I, I was just like, this just feels like the right uh, voice language to play through, right? And mm -hmm. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. But recently I was like, okay, I want to check out the English 
version. For starters, mm. now that I understand what the hunters are saying, they are omega violent. Like my hunter, <laughs> listen, every time I reload my, my gun lens, my hunter goes, I'm going to punch you full of holes. And I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, that's <laughs> but, one thing I really dislike. I know, because I think I saw you mention on Twitter maybe that they were more like respectful in the in, about the monsters in the Japanese lines. Was that is that something you wrote? I can't remember. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there like, are some lines like that in English, and and I get that people said no. It's it's there's a breath. There's the really nice ones, and then there's the really mean ones. I'm like, but the mean ones go into such a dark area that I don't think that they're no long. It no longer fits the feel of what a hunter is. I think mm-hmm. it's it's cruel. Like they feel like they're hunting for sport and they feel mean. And I just, I don't like the aggressiveness at all. I think it's way too much. They'll say like, daddy needs a new pair of boots. Like (laughs) what the hell, man? I mean, like you're right. Like I do need a new, I need new boots, but (laughs) you don't have to say it. um, The voices of Japanese are done so well. If you understand what they're saying, Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's, they came to a really good way of finding how to make them sound aggressive in some ways. So there are, there's still the aggressive characters, mm-hmm. but they don't, they don't sound mean or vindictive towards the monsters. Um, I, I personally played in monster hunter language, so they just speak gibberish for me, which is how I prefer it. They don't need to say anything. In fact, what gets me though, is like, I found, I think they needed more variety in some of their voice, voice lines because I would agree. If you're fighting a monster and like it runs away, Everybody at the exact same time says the exact same thing every time. Yeah. And like, I don't know what they're saying because it's in Monster Hunter language, but it's always the same line every time. And I'm like, and you just you get it like stuck in your head at some point. And like th- just a yeah, little you, bit of variety. So everybody saying something different would have been great. You know, y- Yuna and I recently switched to Monster Hunter language just to see what it sounded like. And it was so weird for us. One, because <laughs> the lips seem like they're made for towards the Japanese language. So the, the it's always was made for off. Japanese. Yeah. And two, I mean, you always, your first experience is always going to be the most natural feeling. Like it's say, like mm-hmm. if you watched a four kids dub of an anime and then you watched it in somewhere else, it's, it's going to feel off, right? Because that's like mm-hmm. your first experience. Mm-hmm. It feels really weird. And it feels like, I don't know how they translated and how they made the language, but it feels very short. Like sometimes they, they're, the lines are just, they feel like they should be longer, mm-hmm. um, but they feel like they're just like, they're summarizing a two sentence with a, oh, da babi. And that's it. And it's like, what? <laughs> they, they've never... Well, I don't know how they did it in... Uh, I don't know how they did it in World, because I played it in English. But it, it, it's probably really hard to, like, take something that was, like, made to be a very, like, short, like... You know, because they would just say yeah. stuff, and then you'd have block of text. So short thing, block of text. And now they have to make that yeah. a full language for cutscenes in a game. Like, I, I, yeah. I do have to give them credit for doing that. Like, that's pretty above and yeah. beyond for something you didn't need to do. <laughs> And I appreciate that it's the, it's still the same Japanese voice actors who are doing the monster language uh, mm-hmm. ones, but I do feel that some do a, but a better job of keeping the emotion where the other people feel like they're reading a script because mm-hmm. you could tell it's not words that mean anything to them. Mm-hmm. So, and I think just the Japanese voice acting is so good in Rise. It's, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe it's, I'll switch. It's crazy it good. So. Like, I really like the voice acting in Monster Hunter World for English. I actually thought the English was really well done. Mm-hmm. Um, Rise, I, I don't know. I've just been playing the Japanese language. I, I haven't really touched the English one. So then there's also the um, the little endemic videos, the, the, the intros of the monsters. And I saw those in oh, English. Yeah. And I was like, no... Why would you? I, why would you throw money away localizing this? Just give them the Japanese version. It's so much better. I, I know. I heard that. I haven't watched it yet, but I heard the English one is really bad. Like, or just like a lot of people much prefer the uh, Japanese one. It's it's not. Some terrible. people actually prefer the English. Some people actually like yeah, it. I've, it's almost like poetry night at like like a coffee house. Like you get like open mic and you stand up and you do like open haikus and stuff. Like a Rui card opens the chat and Super Red smiles. You know, it's like yeah, it's, <laughs> It, it it's just it's i think it it to me it feels even weirder because of the fact that i've heard the haikus in japanese and i'm just like i love it because they go like and I, 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 oh i i i do want to correct something I, they're not haikus at all just so everyone mm-hmm. knows okay mm-hmm. I, I don't know what um, they are then. i think I, because they because they made it more poetry in english i think there's a a belief that they were haiku or waka in japanese but they're it's actually a very specific style of um what's what's the instrument uh 
the the the, the biwa. There's a very specific type of uh, singing style that goes with that. Um, so it is so free, it's music. So. It's a song. But as as a, as a lover of actual haiku, I have to state out that it's not a haiku. <laughs> but uh, the the ones in Japanese, I think they sound great. And then you hear the the ones in English, and it's just like some dude reading, and they give him like a deep voice. And it's like, aha, here is where the Azuros catches his fish. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> what? The <laughs> what? National Fangos Geographic rushes his prey. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's weird, but it was an experiment that I that I just needed to do. I I do think it's funny some of the stuff my hunter says. It, it completely like now that I've finished the game, right, and I'm just like grinding. I don't mind getting pulled out of the experience a little bit because I can imagine that if I was just like still hunting and doing the story and whatnot and do still getting mega immersed and suddenly my hunter would go, "I'm gonna punch you full of holes." I'm just like, "Whoa!" Oh my god. <laughs> like, so I got a que- I got a question for you guys. I want to know if this bothers you guys at all. Um, but it's something that I don't personally like, which is. I think especially because the setting for Komuda is so classical, like Japanese village, like almost like Seven Samurai, like setting it. It's not contemporary at all. Like mm-hmm. there's something that rubs me wrong when they're using like everyday slang. Like some like of the, the, like, well, Utsushi in English, like some of his line, he sounds like a, he sounds like a, a bro from like. Oh, 2019, yeah. you know what I mean? I forgot. He doesn't about sound that. like he comes from that time period. He doesn't sound like the way he's been written, right? Not spoken, but the way they're written, they're using slang that modern people would use, but they're doing it in a setting that feels kind of like feudal Japan. And it's kind of like, mm. well, is that a local? Like, I hope you've got thing? insurance. I'm like, insurance doesn't exist in this world. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> is, is it a localization thing or is it, uh, is it just like, is the character also kind of, oddly time placed in japanese as well no in japanese they 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 do a really good job of role playing everybody to being in, to fit that time period mm. so they'll use kind of like old language uh and stuff like that and really play on the samurai thing i mean english is at a disadvantage because that stuff doesn't translate over uh yeah. one for one but i thought they yeah. went a little too modern it's almost like having a valley girl like jumping into like a samurai film, like I'm oh like, God, they're coming. What are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so fun. That'd, be, that'd actually be really funny. <laughs> Can uh, I get a selfie with you? You know, it's like they wouldn't call them selfies. You know, I mean, they might call them selfies. They have bird <laughs> pictures. <now. laughs> bird pictures. The you basically have a cell phone in that game. Um, uh, I will. I guess I think it depends how much you take the Monster Hunter storyline and maybe the setting seriously because they're, they are very yeah. silly games. Yeah. So having a silly localization isn't necessarily That's something true. I care to. We have to. cats running around talking. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, they can kind of like get away with some stuff. I think I, the one thing that I'm kind of like, Oh, that's a little weird is like when they're like overly violent toward like talking towards the monsters when they're like, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to rip your head off and kill your children and make them watch, you know, like that's a really <laughs> weird thing to say. Why did you say that? Like, <laughs> this is a monster it doesn't think the way we think like why are you being so awful to it you've hunted like 10 yeah. of these like leave them alone it is pretty crazy <laughs> it's just cruel so <clears throat> how do you feel about the hunting times in um, modern monster hunter because um in older monster hunter I, I don't know if it was because i wasn't as good at the games because like the game where i started actually getting good was in world um, mm-hmm. but I feel like in the older games, you would, the hunts would last longer, like a, a regular hunt for, you know, your average player could be 15 to 20 minutes. Whereas like in rise, I mean, the village quests, we already know that they're easier. So I went through the entirety of village, most of the time, sub seven, sub five, even on my first run through, which I was like, this is not normal. I'm, I'm not this good. Right. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's, it feels very fast. And, but but now that I've you know I'm at end game I have my sets and whatnot I'm still going through most monsters like sub ten which to me getting sub ten even in world I'd be like I did pretty well there you know sub ten it's not too bad um, mm-hmm. like how how do you feel about the the times the clear times um, I think with the scaling if you played a old school Monster Hunter game and you went four player and you went old, and you went four player and rise it would probably be about the same amount of time like they'd be like you like rise is rise i do think rise is shorter uh but i think they they even out in the four player side of things but solo you're going to have a much faster experience in rise than you one because there's scaling for that in the hub uh though 
um, people corrected me on this one a lot. Uh, hub in the old school games isn't scaled for four players it's, it's scaled, scaled for, for like two. one point two, two five to two two up to two something close to two um so it it, it does e it basically evens out to be about the same amount of speed but it is it is shorter in rise i know um i personally liked uh more slower methodical hunts uh, i don't want them to be too long i think like if a hunt takes you 30 minutes it's a bit exhausting you know, but uh, like a hunt taking like five minutes, uh, especially when it's like your first hunt of that monster uh, is 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 a little weird to me. Like I expected to go a bit longer than that, especially when you like enter into high rank or you enter into G rank and stuff still pretty easy. It was it was it was surprising. I mean, you don't enter into G rank and rise, but you know what yeah. I mean? How about you, Gadget? How do you feel about the clear times for rise? I mean, I just like to remind everybody that it's still just high rank. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I think back to my high rank time through world, and like, hunts were fast. I just, um, I mean, the tempered monsters, or whatever, had like bloated HP, and it took forever. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But to me, I I like it because it one, I think it was intentional because there's so many different things to try out in this game. I think like generations, they wanted to keep it. If it was like 20 minute hunts, then I think people would be less likely to try out new weapons, try out new switch skills, and they would try what they normally do because losing, you know, because you're not used to it and then taking 30 minutes and then dying is never fun. I think also just 2021 modern day, like mod, like how we play on the go is mm -hmm. has changed. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, smaller bite size, but very focused. Like a lot of the meat has been cut out. Like the movement is much faster. So imagine taking an old hunt, removing all that extra traversal time, all that extra prep time, I assume that the one-on-ones with the monsters are actually not all that different. You generally get about three rounds. You know, you're in area one, you fight, round two, and then round three is usually where they die. So mm -hmm. to me, it's it's enough one-on-one -on -one where I feel like I'm getting my, my fix of the, I, I feel the rhythm. And then once I get it down, uh, it's over. So uh, I actually like it, but I expect that once they go into master rank, um, I imagine that it'll probably bop up hunts by about five minutes, uh, which will make mm -hmm. them about 15, 17 minute affairs, which will be just right. Um, so, yeah, I feel good about it. It's just um, like you were saying, like playing in the older games alone just was was much tougher. But that being said, when I did my third playthrough of Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate mm -hmm. and I was just doing solo Prowler through G rank, which was not scaled for one player. I was still clearing Rajang under 10 minutes as a solo, solo cat. prowler. <laughs> so like Holy. so so I got sub 10s on a lot of monsters going through even G rank. So it makes mm -hmm. me think that like you were mentioning the first one, I think we're just really good. Um, I know. It's not I uh, <laughs> not you know what I mean? I'm not meaning that in a weird hubris way, but I think mean, like we played so much of 5th gen that these mechanics, we're, we're really good at them yeah. at this point. So I think mm -hmm. you go back to world, you're going to slaughter stuff, even starting out with basic weapons. I do. I do think that's a factor. Um, like it, it definitely, I just like, I, I do think uh, it is a factor that we are veterans of the series and therefore good. In fact, people that like criticize my video say that they're like, you're a veteran of the series. You need to take that into account. And like, I did take it into account. Um, they, they, I think they are definitely shorter, but like you're saying, mm -hmm. like they're kind of designed to be so, and it makes sense. Like they, they, these are very fast paced fights. You want them to not overstay their welcome almost. So like, I get what they were going for. Um, and like, I will even point out that like I ran like, I think last night, maybe the night before I ran, uh, a solo high rank, uh, Nargakuga in, in portable third. And that took, and that was like with a high rank weapon, like, the, like one of the high rank Nargakuga weapons. And it took so long. And I was like, I was exhausted <laughs> at that point. And like Huns can definitely overstay their welcome for sure. Um, and rise is trying to like remedy that in some capacity. You got, you guys are talking to me about long hunts. I remember, um, at one point I was like, um, vacationing. So I didn't have access to internet. So basically, I would yeah. have to solo everything <laughs> in GU, and I played Gunlance in GU, Ugh. and I was trying to get, I think it was um, a, one of the Brocky Dios quests, I don't know which one it was, but it had like two Brocky Dios in it, mm -hmm. and I timed out on that quest twice, 
Well, man, they like shafted you and uh, they shafted you and in you. <laughs> yeah, we got shafted so bad, dude. What What's your opinion on the on the heat gauge? Because like I feel like the heat gauge was just like a it was like a punishment, if anything, to uh, gun lance users. That was unnecessary from, from outside looking in. Here's here's my thing about the heat gauge. I think the heat gauge would have been fine if it was a buff. Yeah, problem, I agree. If it was like a is, reward. Yeah, the problem is that they nerfed the crap out of the gun lens, and then in order to get it back to the old values, you have to manage the heat gauge. And even that didn't bother me that much. You want to know what really bothered me? It was the what? overheat mechanic was way too punishing. It's oh, literally yeah. the only weapon in that game where if you mess up your combo, like, oh, you shelled one time too many, that's two minutes of minus 20% damage for you. And it's yeah. like... That's and there's literally nothing you can do. It's like you're locked out of damage for two minutes. And I was like, that that is way too punishing. No other weapon has to deal with that. No other weapon. It, I know. And like it would be fine if it was a reward, but like if they're you're just trying to get back up to your normal damage, basically. <laughs> yeah, and and the and it was very disappointing in GU because like shells just did almost no damage. And it's like my favorite mm. playstyle is to play with shells. So mm -hmm. eventually I just bit the bullet and I was like, I'll just play with friends and I'll play Alchemy Gun Lens and I'll just have fun with it and whatever. Like we would still get good times because I'd be able to support them with the Alchemy buffs and whatnot. And you can mm -hmm. still get a lot of stagger out of it. And basically uh, to me, I was like, this is the tax for how cool this weapon is. Because in GU, I still think the weapon was pretty cool. Like double A flare is an amazing skill. Like use double A flare. That's like, such a great skill. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's not very good in terms of its performance, but in terms of like friggin' style, it's just like, bam, bam. It's just like, whoa. It's, it's, it's actually, it actually is a, like a meta skill. Like it's, it's very good. It, I was very surprised. And like, it's so flashy and like satisfying. What do you mean, like, what do you mean meta skill? No, it's not. Like it, I'm pretty sure. It, it, no. I think I talk about it in my video, don't I? I, I'm, uh, I, I hope you didn't say it was a meta skill because I'm pretty I, sure I think, it's not. I'm pretty sure it was used in um in a uh, in speedruns. I may be wrong, but I'd have to, I'd have to double check. But I think I think it was actually a fairly uh, useful for like um I can't remember. I guess what. I, I guess it's a depends. very high stagger modifier. It has a stagger modifier for aerial monsters. If they're flying, mm. then it can stagger them out of the sky. Yeah, it's very good for mm. that. But uh, every time that I would like look up what people were doing with Gunlands, people were like, yeah, forget about the shells. Just get damage. Just get uh, something with wide shelling to fill up the gauge real fast and then just oh, deal yeah. poke damage. That's what you want to do. And I was like, no, I want a shell. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have and then you have friggin Chaos Slayer going out there and just being like, you know what? I'm going to shell Lao Shen Lung to death. And I was like, you crazy oh, yeah. bastard. And he did it. Like a 30 minute <laughs> video of him just like shelling and not using artillery to kill Lao well, Shen. He's godly. He's so good. <laughs> he's a beast with a friggin' weapon. <laughs> the the amount of research that he's been doing for the for the gun lances in um in Rise too, it's it's insane. Like he you'll like math it all out and, and friggin' spreadsheets and whatnot and be like, the Barrioth gun lens is actually pretty good. And I'm like, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> But okay. Mm -hmm. he, he's very dedicated. He like helped me with uh with my script actually. I was very lucky to have him uh ha like I always have somebody proofread my scripts. At least at least one person. I try to get multiple. Um but he was he was very uh like very quick and like easy to help or easy to work with and stuff like that and he's very knowledgeable. So I, I do appreciate a lot of the work he puts in for yeah, a specific, like for for a specific weapon. Like he does a lot of work for it. I I try to give him in my channel as many shout outs as possible because he deserves a lot more people watching his videos. <laughs> like I learned so much from Chaos Slayer; it's freaking insane. Mm -hmm. So um, we were talking about hunting times because I almost got lost in the middle of my notes. It is like almost <laughs> two in the morning, so it is expected that my huh. mind's going to start drifting. But um, just a bit. Your your main weapon is the longsword, right? This is the big reason why I, I didn't want it to bring it to the podcast because your main weapon's the longsword. <laughs> yes. Why do you like the longsword? It was um it was I'm trying to think of how to explain it. So like imagine like you've played through Freedom 2 a little bit and you're like I don't get the game, right? Like yeah, you're playing like great sword and you're like it's slow and you don't completely understand it. You're like okay, um, and then you try Freedom Unite, and then you're like, you, you still don't get it. You're like, this game's slow, and I don't get it. Um, so you try to find like a middle ground. You don't want to play ranged or anything like that. 
Um, you're still playing Greatsword or something like that and try because you don't have Longsword unlocked yet because you have to unlock Longsword and uh, Switch Axe, I think. Um, and then, like, you finally do unlock Longsword and try where it's, like, um, in old school, it's, like, at the peak of its design, in my opinion. It's, like, one of the, the best iterations of Longsword. And uh, it's, a, it's a very simplistic weapon with a very high skill ceiling uh, in mm-hmm. how you're going to utilize its uh, its move set, and it was it was it was incredibly satisfying to use. Um, the idea that you're powering it up as you use it is was like incredibly satisfying to like my like my like caveman brain, you know. Um, and then it was also it was just anime as heck. Like it was so cool. Like I was like a huge weeb back then. I'm still a weeb, but like it was a huge. I, mean, I was even bigger of a weeb back then. So like being a samurai like swordsman that's hunting monsters, hell yeah. And then it just stuck, man. Like it's a it was a it was a godly weapon back then. Like um, it still is. It, it, it's I mean like yeah. So well, it's different. But, yeah, it's different. It it I was uh, I was saying this earlier. I think before the podcast, but I consider them like. Do you know about do, do you know about Frontier at all? I've I've uh I, I know about the game and I've seen I'm I'm actually currently going through your frontier video like I think I watched about 20 minutes of it or something like that but nice, yeah nice. I do have it like queued up and every now and then I'll go back to it watch a little bit more okay so the, it, this is like how I like to explain it so if you if you knew if you know about frontier when they introduce switch axe into frontier it's basically a different weapon it, it is still a switch axe but it has like a it has like a laser beam and stuff it's like crazy <laughs> It's called. They call it Switch Axe F. Like it's a. Compl- it's almost a completely different we- weapon. So like Longsword, in my opinion, in Gen Five onwards, is a completely different weapon. It is yeah. like it is a counter machine. That is like its yeah. playstyle. That is its goal is to counter, to be in place and 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 read your monster and counter it and like just keep doing that because that is like how you do the highest amount of damage and then you helm a splitter or something i i i personally play a little more casual i just like soccer slash a lot and build out my gauge and then <laughs> i i use like the valor uh rounds because they brought back the valor combo yeah. from uh generations ultimate so i use Spirit that reckoning it's, it's, combo it's, yeah so like one of the one of the best like it's high damage hits up high i love it um but it, it was really such a simplistic weapon to me back in the day i think it's a little more mechanically convoluted now people and but it was it was such a simplistic weapon you would get your spirit gauge up you get a you get an attack boost um and then you would just try to keep your gauge up and i love that about it i think it was such a cool weapon where and like if you if you got used to fade slashing and finding the little nuances where you would do your spirit combo and you could fit an extra attacks into it to keep the gauge up so you could spirit combo more so satisfying satisfying like i i always looked up to and aspired to longsword users when i started because I could never get that good with the weapon, even though I liked it. Um, because mm-hmm. like you go back and you watch some videos of really good players, and you're like, what they're doing, that looks really easy. It's not. It's the 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 little slight repositionings that they're doing with fade slashes, mm-hmm. the little input delays that you do in between the combos were so subtle but so big yeah. back in the day that like anybody with a trained eye is like a chef looking at something differently. Like we could see it. We're like Oh wow, this person's good. Like, okay, they yeah. really it's almost like great sword levels of like knowing where to stand. You yeah. know, like knowing where your combo is going to end, and they'll just clip the face right at the end with the spirit oh, round. And it's just like that's always so satisfying. Uh I, I, I explained it to some people, uh, because I I've seen people say like they don't like fighting Narcacuka or they don't like fighting Barioth with a longsword. And I'm like, no, no, no. If you fight like five Barioths mm. so that you get it, because Barioth has this awful hip check. Like it, it's so awful because yeah. he'll just quickly like jump and then throw it out at you. But as you learn the fight, it, it's one of the most satisfying fi- satisfying fights to learn as a longsword user because you can obliterate a Barioth even if it's and it's like one of the faster monsters. So you're just keeping up with it, staying behind it, getting its tail. It turns at you, but you fade slash just at the right time. It's fantastic. And um, I think Rurikon, you were saying like like you think it's like overtuned in uh, gen, in gen, right? And I, I agree with you. I think it's a very uh, high, yeah. like like it's a very overtuned weapon right now. Um, but I th- it's just I, too I, versatile, I, right? Yeah, it's too versatile. Like it has so many mechanics that like it can just like do whatever it wants. I, I personally, and I, I've always said like if they got rid of every counter on that weapon, like pretty pretty much every counter, maybe leave like one like silk mine ability or something. Um, and they just gave, if they really wanted to make it like better, like if you just gave fade slash iframes, like, and got rid of everything yeah. else, that weapon would be, be like perfect simplistic and godly. Like it'd be fantastic. So it's been fun watching Yuna cause Yuna has been playing a lot of longsword lately. She fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Um, good, but good. she doesn't, she doesn't 
like complication. Like, she doesn't, doesn't like the counters. She she does she doesn't use the counters at all. I think she might attempt one fade slash a hunt if that. Mm-hmm. But she, what she likes, she's almost playing it like old school longsword. So she'll like mm. using fade slashes to reposition, to use the the spirit combo a lot. And but and she loves the helmbreaker, so she'll use that a lot. Mm-hmm. But it's basically old school longsword with helmbreaker, and so it's really fun watching her play it because she's learning the positioning of the monsters much better. Where like you said, if you play it the way they want you to play it right now. Uh, Rurikai, kind of, you were saying like, you have a friend that goes into a hunt who d- doesn't even attack. He just yeah, he just counters. counters. <laughs> yeah, because like that's what they want you to do. Like Peppo, the the best longsword player uh, by uh, t- uh, speedrunning TDS, logic. yeah, yeah, by uh, for, for, uh, TDS member is that's all he does. He counters, like he learns the monster. He's really he good. gets yeah, he gets every counter in, and then he helm splitters. But like that play style is not the old school play style in any capacity, right? It's a different weapon, yeah. yeah. I would mm-hmm. agree with that assessment. But they're both yeah. I think and this is probably why you still use it is I think they're they're very different weapons, but they're still very fun. Oh both yeah, Longsword's like got goaded. Like <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's I'm amazing. lucky that I fall I fall in the camp of uh with hunting horn. Unfortunately, some people just did not gel with the new version because it is a very different weapon. I mm. like you, I, I gel with both the old and the new one, mm-hmm. so it works for me, but I can see why some people don't. I love like the, the hunting horn versions. now. It's so much fun. <laughs> I, I will say, like, as someone that hasn't played the hunting horn, like I, I haven't mean the hunting horn, but as someone that like researched it like through every generation to see where it came and like rise. Yeah. I was like very like I don't know. I think I think that was a weapon that had so much character in its in its depth and mechanics. I understand why it was like the least popular weapon, but I thought it was so unique and cool and to see it like see it, to see it become a, like more effective overall, which is great, but to see it lose a lot of its like uh uniqueness in how mechanically intensive it was. I was it was like bittersweet for me. If that makes sense. But yeah, I, but I don't I play it, so it, I don't care. It would care, be but... ni- it would be nice if they found one way to add in some some deep nuance into the weapon would be nice because it is a yeah. little bit more um simple because i mean always was that every attack was about the same attack power which was the great thing so it mm-hmm. didn't matter which attack you did it was just a matter of the songs and also posi- positioning mm-hmm. um one thing i greatly miss is the ability to do the behind the back smash uh in the middle of a combo they took that out and that really bothers me because that's my favorite move with the weapon so mm-hmm. I like constantly will just stop doing it and like stop moving just so I can do that attack because there's nothing more satisfying than doing the behind the head smash and hitting the face of a monster. It feels so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I would agree. I think they need just one little mechanic in there that has uh, it's a little quirky for new users, but can be used to great effect with skilled users would be nice. Exactly. Yeah. I We need a counter. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> I, I played a, I played the hunting horn recently because um, my longsword friend he kept saying like oh my god these helmbreaker numbers I love it it's so good and I was like really let let me make those bigger so I played earth shaker and it, not, it wasn't earth shaker I just gave him like the the infernal melody buff and I'm like okay try now and he's like oh my god he's just like destroying everything. You can you can right. boost those helm splitter or helm breaker numbers. I can't remember, I can never remember which one's which. Splitter it's, is like sword and shield. And, the, I don't yeah. think there's a splitter anymore. I think it's just helm breaker. The, the helm breaker. sword and shield they renamed it to plunging thrust or whatever something like uh, that. Yeah. But you you can you can boost those numbers so high right now. Yep. Like so ridiculous high, ridiculously high with the uh, the silk mine boost that you can get for uh, the Tigrex longsword. Oh my god! Like. That weapon is so powerful, like un- unruly powerful. It's to it's to the point that I was saying, um, I was I said in my review, like they they think that I I, th- I find that they made this game much easier than previous entries, and it's not necessarily a negative thing, but it is easier in my opinion. And people were like, yeah. "Well, just don't play longsword," and I was like, <sighs> "Yeah, I, that's my <laughs> it weapon." Has nothing to do with it. I I do. Yeah, you want me to play? To you want me to? Well, yeah, I know it doesn't. Yeah, it's nothing to do with it. It is like you could play any weapon and like. Not necessarily yeah. do it as it's, fast, but like in fact, one of the good things easier, about yeah. the game being, yeah, one of the good things actually about it being easier, at least in my opinion, is that then I guess ninety nine percent of Twitter wouldn't agree because everyone is still chasing the meta, is that mm-hmm. it actually matters much less now about using like the best of the best set, like because what are you gonna do? Shave a hunt down from six minutes to five? Like whoop yeah, do? it doesn't matter. Sixty. It's not even like I've given up one level of attack so I can get in a comfort skill. It's you're losing what maybe ten seconds on your hunt. 
Oh my god! Most people yeah. don't care. That's so like, like could, you know, being able to put the evade extender and, and and replace that with an attack jewel and not feel like I'm actually hurting myself. Mm -hmm. It feels great. It, mm -hmm. it really does allow for you to play around and have fun. And this mm -hmm. is why I Absolutely. play Part Breaker, Wirebug Whisper, Gunlance. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh my god! That's awesome! It's, it's so much fun, dude. Just no knocking idea. that monster down. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> You, it, it's so hard to convince one person to put in flinch free. Like I, I still can't believe we're we're in a time where people are bullying longsword users for using uh, for 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 tripping people or going for the head. It's like, what do you what do you want me to do, man? My best attacks need to be at the head at this point. Yeah. I, I get rid of the tail. I need to go for the head. I'm sorry. I, I put flinch free yeah, in. Pops off. I still yeah, I still flinch lean free. I still lean into the meme quite a bit. Uh, it's actually hard for me in some sets to to put flinch free because I need three speed sharpening. I was like, I need oh. speed, three speed. If I don't have three speed sharpening, I can't live anymore. But yeah. uh, <laughs> it's it's like I do like to bring up whenever people bring up the flinching thing. I'm like, yes, long swords flinch you. But you know what else flinches you in Rise? Dual blades and a hunting horns. Hunting horns actually flinch you more than long swords now because of the shockwave effect. They'll just like be flinching people nonstop, particularly weapons that are susceptible to flinching, like lances and gun lances and sword and shield. Those weapons are screwed if they don't bring a bracelet. I love when people are like, I miss the old days where everyone cared about where they were standing. I'm like, what awesome friends did you have? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't that remember. was never a thing I don't for remember me. that. <laughs> you think I'm like perfectly positioning myself away from my friends so I'm not attacking them? No, I'm getting the tail and then I'm going for the head. Like, that's it. <laughs> like. I was like, I mean, I talked about my history and why Slash Axe or, or Switch Axe, which is one of my favorite weapons, was the very last one I learned is because I was traumatized from someone at work that was using it and just like flinching the shit out of me, a, a Lance <laughs> user. And I thought it was the hor most horrible weapon ever, but so, it's, it's, it's funny. So the longsword's your main weapon. Uh, what Have mm -hmm. you played uh, the other weapons and which one called out to you the most? Like, which one do you think is the most fun outside of your main weapon? Uh, wow. I, I guess, like, I still haven't played through Lance too much yet because so that you can't, I can't really speak on that one. And I can't speak on either of the heavy or light bow gun. But I've played everything else at least a bit in order to do the history videos. Um, dual blades is definitely like a very easy one to get into and it's a lot of fun. Um, but switch axe is probably like the most mechanically interesting to me. And it's also like one of the more visually interesting, but like, like if you're a long sword user and you're looking for like another weapon to play, like dual blades is like a next step. If you want to, yeah. if you want to try something else, it, it's so easy to get into and it's like unga bunga, unga bunga damage. Like it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, but, but switch that switch axe is so cool, like mechanically and visually, um, and they have so they have really cool designs in Rise. Like I think Seth just got the the thousand origami switch axes. Yeah, I know. So I, yeah. I, I wanna yeah, I wanted to call it out, but congratulations, Seth. You are crazy. Please get some sleep. Yeah, I was gonna uh, dude, I, I, dude I, Ryan's. I made I, sure to tweet out his accomplishment to the Japanese account as well so they can see it uh, in mm -hmm. Japanese. But it's like that's crazy, my friend. Wow. I was gonna mm -hmm. I was gonna bring that up, but uh, since you guys brought it up, uh, yeah, I, I I thought that was crazy because like I kept seeing tweets from from Seth. I I actually don't even know Seth all that well, but I I I, th I think I do follow him on Twitter because I saw a lot of people liking his posts and whatnot. So I kept seeing like his progress. Like I'm at three hundred something. Now the question yeah. that I have to ask because I don't think I picked that up from the start. Why? Oh, okay. uh, read the description of the weapon. It says it is said that if you uh, crafted one thousand of these, then your wish would you be granted a wish. Yeah. And so he saw that and said that, and he also does things for the lols, even though it, it, it's, it's sadistic, oh and he God. does things that takes a lot of time. So yeah. Um. So and he probably figured no one else is going to do this, so why not? So well, he, his, he does that kind of stuff. That his is wish insane. to yeah his, his big thing. So Seth is like a frontier player. Um, and if, if you, um, you'll get to it in my video eventually, Rory, but there's a, there's like a Poogie equivalent cause Poogie's used for something different in Frontier. He's like, he has like main functions and are, is very useful. Um, but there's like a, there's another Poogie equivalent called a, it's called like a, a Goku or like Goku or something. Uh, it's a little duck and he loves this duck and he wants this yeah. duck to come back into like the mainline series. So I think that's his wish to the Monster Hunter community or to the development team is to bring back the duck. I, I, seem and, uh, to, but I seem to remember play, that uh, Sarah Symmetry used to play with that duck through a mod yeah, in World, right? He, uh, I think that was Seth. 
that did that, but Sarah has like the duck in his like uh, overlay on on stream sometimes, and he might have also used the mod. I'm pretty sure uh, he used the mod as well. Yeah, <laughs> like, I've seen stuff from yeah. him. Yeah, because Sarah is also another big uh, frontier player. He actually helped me a lot on the script for those videos. A, a lot on the script for those videos. He was uh, a huge factor in those in in those videos. Um, but you you play you play Final Fantasy 14, right? Yes, I, I play 14. Like, yeah, yeah. So um, I I'm I'm also a big 14 player, and so is Saf. And before he did the thousand origami switch axe, he collected nine hundred and ninety nine of those Rathalos high rank Rathalos scales from the <laughs> Rathalos uh, event crossover event. That's so, awesome. So like that dude, that dude just grinds for like no reason. <laughs> I I grinded Rathalos in in fourteen with uh, a couple of friends, and it was funny because when I was at like uh, I think. 45 scales or whatever a rathalos dropped and i actually passed it so the, somebody oh, else, the whistle yeah the whistle the whistle dropped, dropped. and i just I, oh, I passed it for somebody else because like it's fine i got 45 i'm gonna be getting it soon anyway but the the most fun thing about the rathalos event 14 to me was i had all these people that were playing with me and i knew that they played a ton of 14 right they they mm -hmm. done raids and all of these things they sucked mm -hmm. at Rathalos. <laughs> they would get I know, their yeah. asses kicked. And I'd just be like, nope, I know all the tells. No problem here. I'd be like, that's yeah. the tail swipe. Move away. And I would see them just like get slammed into the air. And I was like, yes, yeah, sucks to be you. <laughs> that, that's such a satisfying boss fight. Like that was, it was so cool how they implemented that. I really liked it. It is. It's freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. I loved it. But um, it, it's funny that you brought up the switch hacks because I remember me and Gaijin, we were, we were talking about like, weapons during the the demo days and i think both of us came to the conclusion that like switch axe was one of the most impressive reworks that they had done because it just felt so good to play the switch axe and you know in the in the actual final game it feels even better because you have friggin um the soaring wyvern thing and you have the additional mm -hmm. files and the other files charge way faster than power file so it kind of incentivizes people you should try out this different file thing over here and try this because it charges faster and gets you to amp state faster and then amp goes into the the axe and whatnot it was so good very very good mm -hmm. But I'm very sad that you didn't say gun lance, so you know it is what it is. It's it's so it, I don't wanna I don't wanna insult you, but it was oh, no. so unfun for me to play that weapon, man. No. I, I have such a hard time playing a weapon that is that that like, you can't roll while it's unsheathed. You have to like sidestep and everything. Like that that threw me off. And I was like, I'm sure if I got used to it more and like put more time into it, I would at least uh, be able to uh respect it. As, you as don't even weapon, respect my what do you mean? I, wow. I do. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I respect it. It's just I was like I I could I I record all my footage and I'm recording like generations of footage for this weapon and the entire time I'm just like <laughs> oh, I, like I, I kept warning people when I, before the video came out. I, I was like, get ready for like the worst Gunlance gameplay you guys have ever seen. Like, this is so hard to play. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I'm having a bad time. <laughs> I will say though the um, uh, the arena quest against Berioth, mm -hmm. hunting horn is by far my best time because it's my weapon. And my rise? second best time is with gunlance. Yeah, that gunlance is really good. I, it's I, really good, and it feels really good. Like so, I was gonna say one of the most enjoyable arena matchups in the game. I think is that gunlance versus the Berioth. It is very enjoyable. I was I was surprised because I thought the fight wasn't going very well for me, and then I finished, and it was S, and I was like, "Wow, yeah. okay." <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but uh, by comparison, you know which one is the worst arena fight? What the bow for in Nargakuga? No, no, in general, the bow in Nargakuga and um, Royal Ludra. Oh, no, that was that was awesome. I I really liked that one. That bow, bow was so bad. I don't know how you. Yeah, guys, I can't I can't play arena with other weapons. I, I will only do the arena ones that have long sword. <laughs> I did all of them. I I, actually, I know it's, you it's, did. It's with I didn't even know weapons. you unlock something. I, I yeah, will... you get the the, car, the carving pro, so I can now double carve tails. It's so good, and I, the that's first so day, crazy. The first day I made uh, the Zinogre light bow gun, uh, you know, like cut tails in ten seconds set. Yeah. And so basically, I just ran into Magnamalo. I quick just uh, was I, I I knocked him over. I cut off his tail in three seconds. I quick trap him and I blow up his head. I carved the tail twice. I leave. <laughs> and I got you know three or four purple orbs in like forty five minutes, and I'm like done. What it paid for the effort. 
and that and I think it was just a fun journey because mm-hmm. it's not, you don't they don't require you to get S or anything, but it's just those quests can take like a long time, and you mm-hmm. really do need to know the weapons because that Narga and the uh, Ludroth quest Narga hits really hard. Oh in that yes, quest. oh yes, and so like like there's some weapons where I needed to actually think about using the endemic life, like picking up that little cloth fly makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Always healing after you get hit, but completing it was fun. And I, I encourage everybody to try it out because it is really interesting to get out of your comfort zone and try all the weapons. Here's, here's the trick. I'm, I'm going to give everybody the trick to completing these arena quests. Here's what you do. You start your regular monster hunter session. You go hunt a monster with a friend or in multiplayer, whatever you do. And then after you hunt that monster, whatever you were going to hunt, it's like, now I'll do an arena quest. And then you get out of that arena quest, and I'll go hunt another monster for fun. And then I'll do another arena quest. Yeah, doing them in a row, it's a little much. Doing them in a row, is, I think it's not a good idea at all. So I, I'll just like how, interweave how many, them. How many arena quests are there? Uh, I think it's six. eight, six? six. I thought it was eight. And then six, how many yeah, weapons? So total of 30. Oh, total five 30. Each. Okay, yeah, that's a lot. But, yeah. Like some of them are small. Like the Berioth one is very fast to get through. The Kuliaku is actually one of the worst. Because the weapons they give you are total shit. Uh, what do you mean? And, and, and the monster has, and the monster has like the rock the entire time, and I'm just like, uh, Rajan was Rajan was Rajan was, v- Rajan was super fun, but there's two quests in which they don't even take place inside the arena. Yeah, they take place long. inside of an actual map, which is really weird. So the Narga Kuga and Lord Lo- Lo- Ruvath is inside the flooded forest, and then the last oh, one is what? like triple. It's it's Basil. Um, Nah, Basarios Basil, and Volvedon. And, and Wait, let me tell you, they released a new arena quest in yes. the lava update. Cameras. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, and, wow. and 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 let it's, me tell you something. Volvedon is by far the most dangerous of those three monsters. By oh, cause far, because of, <laughs> of the soiled or yeah, the soiled, the paralyzed, the the reach with his tongue, the fact that he dodges everything. Like I remember at one he point, he is hardcore. The, at yeah. one point, I was I was trying to fight him with Basarios. I couldn't hit him. Like, I was riding Basarios, yeah. and I couldn't hit him because he's just like, bounce, bounce, bounce. And that's when my chat actually said something that I thought was very interesting. They're like, yeah, it's that evade extender from his legs. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> you got a point. Yeah. <laughs> now I get it. But I, once I did that quest, I got that thing down. Like, you, Basil mm-hmm. starts out right next to a water spurt every time. So mm-hmm. I just, you, you warp to the one camp, you creep grab the puppet spider, you go downstairs... You puppet spider him, you bang him in the wall twice, throw him into the water, unload, and you can kill him in area one. And then you immediately when you go over, the uh, the Volvedon's fighting Basarios. And I always do, um, uh, like, I'll grab on the Basar. What I do is I'll gra- try to get on the Volvedon first. So what I you can do then is when you headbang Basarios, he's already down. So you you already get the head start. Um, so Basarios can actually do some damage against him. Mm-hmm. Um, and it works out pretty nice, but yeah, it's 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 a long, droll process of doing all five weapons because that that thing on average takes I think like twelve to fifteen minutes depending on your yeah. your your skill level, and that can be a little daunting to do with weapons you're not used to. But luckily, they give you good weapons, uh, no, they good don't. sets this time. So no, they don't. I like what are you them. talking about the, they, that bow set is atrocious. Uh. <laughs> I liked it. Listen, you I'm, wanna... I'm getting better at you know. Yuna told me yesterday. You've gotten much better with Bo. Listen, you, you want to you want to know how I killed that Nargakuga? It's like no. Ch- Chat kept making fun of me because of the fact that I was what, that did I was you do, dying craft with the bow. bombs or something. No, I meleeed that Nargakuga to death with a bow. Oh, oh my god. god! Yes. What? <laughs> yes. I just the like entire fight? dodge, stab, dodge, stab, dodge. Stab. I murdered him in melee. I was like, screw this shooting business. He keeps hitting me. <laughs> at least you, with melee, do you get I know. On that? <laughs> what? Do you at least get carves on those? Or you don't get carves? No, on those, you don't right? get carves. Nope. Uh, no. So yeah, I was gonna say because like you could at least cut the tail with the melee attack, but that's not doesn't matter. In that <laughs> I was also gonna say the the arena this time also even the ones with the triple monsters one cart you fail. What? No yeah. cards allowed. No cards allowed. It's because Garbage. of the scaling. They the because the arenas used to be always scaled for two players. Now they're scaled yep. for one player. And if you, but it's and if like you're having a really hard time, then you better go grab that endemic life or just pray yep. to God because that's it. One that's one try. Rough. That's all you get. That's rough, actually. <laughs> so like I mean, like I, I I know I said I, was, I know I said I find the game easier, but I do still cart fairly often. <laughs> every so often, you know. So like I would definitely see myself failing those and being like, okay, no, I'm done. That's that. 
Yeah. So, um, out of all the uh, monsters in Monster Hunter Rise, which one is? I mean, which one's your favorite monster in general, and which one is your favorite like new monster for Monster Hunter Rise? My favorite monster in general, like in Rise, or just like in in general, in general. from all Monster Hunters. My my top monsters are Legiacris and uh, Brachydios. Like easily, the they are like Brachydios is like, specifically Ivory Legiacris. I really liked. I loved like the land based fight a lot. I got really good at it. And I had to do it a lot anyway because I needed sapphires. Um, and then Bracky is just uh, one. One he has an amazing color scheme. He has an amazing mechanic. He has uh, a great fight. I like brute fights a lot. And uh, overall, like, and he also just had like such an amazing longsword in, in three ultimate. It was so good. <laughs> the pyro demolisher, godly weapon. Uh, they even they even gave all of his weapons a really great design and world. Uh, when with raging Bracky, like they 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 were so visually appealing. Thank God and, for raging Bracky, because the Bracky Dios gun lance looked like ass. It was so bad. Yeah, I was lance, like, dude, the what lance have you was done? horrible. Did, did raging fix it? Yes, raging fixed like, it. it. Oh, good. So much better. Dude, that's good. Yeah, they 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 did the Lightbringer weapons or whatever they called yep. them. They're very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for Rise specifically, Magnamalo really shined. Like it was just such a well designed fight. Um, I'm sure you guys probably saw it on Twitter, but uh, it actually like takes uh, a specific combo animation from uh, a, an incredibly difficult monster in Frontier called Erzarian, who um, is like set, like one of like the poster boy for the end of the game of Frontier. And it was so cool to see something like that put in the game because in Frontier, um, if you got hit by it, you know where he launches you up and you have to like wire fall out of it so he doesn't explode on you. Um, in Frontier, if you get hit by that, that's it. Like you're gonna get exploded on. Like you're done. But Rise has this like wirefall aspect, so it really complements like adding in these new combo mechanics and this higher speed that we might have seen in something like Frontier. But now it's easier. It's more manageable because mm. we have this like wirefall mechanic, and we have the wire bugs in general. So they really complemented one another, and it made Magnamal really shine. And he also has. I'm a sucker for. Um, uh, interactive mechanics when it comes to ailments. So like Gorbanala, oh, yeah. Seregios, uh, Hellfire with Magnamalo. I'm a sucker for that. So uh, that's why Mitsutsune is my favorite of the Faded Four. It has like an interactive mechanic that has like multiple levels to it. So stuff like that is uh, always like a plus for me. So Magnamalo really, really shined for me. I wasn't a big fan of the demo Magnamalo though, but you know, <laughs> the rest of it was great. In, um, yeah. in the, the, the one point, not 1.0 because like the, the game we were playing by the time it actually released was like 1.1.2 1. 1. or whatever it was. But in that version mm -hmm. of the game, uh, my main build ended up being one with Hellfire on it. So it was Hellfire Gunlance, which was like the least meta thing that you can think of. But I was like, dude, I get that Hellfire. I pop a ground mm -hmm. splitter. Ground splitter puts the Hellfire in the ground, instantly detonates it. You get an instant down on the monster. Dude, it's the best. So oh, Grand Splitter does that? That's awesome. Yes. Uh, Sakura Slash does wow. it too. I, and I, oh, wow. And, and Soaring Kick does what? it as well. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Really? I've been like dodging it. I've, I've been like wire like lunging no, out of no, it. No, no, no. You can, you can do, as a matter of fact, I think I got what? that. I don't remember if Soaring does it, but Sakura definitely does. I think Soaring does Holy it as well. Holy crap. Yeah. See, I'm learning stuff still. That's crazy. Cause like uh, I, I think I even did it recently because I was practicing uh, longsword. Because uh, I already recorded my longsword guide as well, um, and I was practicing longsword on Apex Mizu, and I was yeah. like, oh, let's see if uh, soaring kick will drop Hellfire because I got hit by one of the bubbles, and it does, and it's pretty freaking beast. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so good. I think it's pretty much any um, any wire bug move that moves you forward will drop it. Wow. That's like godly actually i'm surprised we don't see more hellfire sets with like stuff like that the, i think the reason you don't see more of them is because you only get a guaranteed down on the first one and then the mm. other ones i don't know how many more you need to drop in order to get that second one but i assume mm -hmm. it's a lot of them in order to get the second down but uh you know even that first down it's it always feels nice to just drop it and on top of it it's always like 50 60 damage that you'll do on top of your regular attacks it's just, it's a little bit more mm -hmm. damage you resist and whatnot and i would use the magnamalo weapon with it as well just for theme it's it's not like it was the magnamalo soul is going to give me like oh my god plus 12 attack it's so good this is like <laughs> who cares yeah my only complaint about magnamalo is that the weapons i wish were a little bit better I think as mm -hmm. a flagship, it deserves to have its weapons used more. But I think, one, there's a confusion between Hellfire and Blast. The fact that 
you don't need his armor to use his weapons. Like it's a yeah. blast weapon. It works great. Mm-hmm. Two, I also think there's it's just it's just not a little bit of step above the other monsters. It's just kind of like it's solid and that's about it. And mm-hmm. three, like the purple orbs just don't drop for anybody. So it's been very <laughs> hard for people to make those weapons. You guys are um, you, but like you guys- you gotta watch my streams, man. You'll get the luck. You'll get the drops. I'm telling you, you're missing out. Yeah, that 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 was something that I remember from your review that you were going like, oh, I just feel like orbs are so easy to get, and I'm like, this fucking guy. <laughs> I, I, I I do I do stand by that, and like the drop rates are the same, but there's just so many more drops. That's what it is. I For think. you, so it, it kind of like I don't get no, them. D- no, like the shinies and everything, and like there's more oh, overall okay, number okay. of drops. So like yeah, yeah. the drop rates are the same, but you are picking up more items. So it kind of conflates the RNG. So it looks like it's yeah. more, but it's not more. And also, it just I am means just, that I'm our bad luck is actually worse than it's ever been. <laughs> yeah, like you guys, yeah, I'm telling you guys. But it's funny though. Like I'll have a lot of people, like I said, like they'll be like, "Oh, like give me your luck," and I'm like, "Okay, I will," but you still need to, you know, uh, break everything take like yeah, yeah. You, get, you i always tell them i'm like you know you can be so lucky but you the only reason i come off as so lucky is because i i do everything possible i get every shiny drop i can i'll 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 yeah. go for lucky cat in the older games or ultra lucky cat i'll uh give cha cha the mailings mask or kayama the mailings mask and in these games you can take two palicos that have a gatherer gathering. or whatever a, 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 gathering Pilfer. so those are like there's ways yeah to really really like you you're surprised how much it optimizes your chances and people people will do yeah. one or two and then they'll be surprised when you get like more drops and it's like well no i i do everything you know yeah. and i'll tell you do the arena quest get the carve go in solo yeah put yeah. i have i have um good luck heartbreaker three capture master carving uh carving master and two pilfer cats I'm going to be fine. I have um, exactly. exactly. I have a set like that. The only thing that's missing is the um the the carving, carving. pro. Yeah, cuz I haven't done all mm-hmm. the arena quests yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did not know about that until you posted about it. That's a very like that's an insane cuz like tail carves are like sometimes your best chance at getting some of those yeah. drops. Pretty crazy. Did you try out the bombardier palico at all? Um I think one of my main palicos is a bombardier palico. Dude. They're the Actually, best. They're so yeah. freaking good. The aim is good. <laughs> Anything that blows stuff up, I'm a big fan of. <laughs> Slime is like my favorite element to use on weapons. How can how blast. can you how can you not play gunlance? Anything that blows stuff up. In because the- you guys don't even you guys don't even blow stuff up with your gunlance. You just slap stuff. It's like the. <laughs> It's only just slapping, and then it's like one one explosion. I think I think it's better in Rise now. Actually, isn't like oh, yes. um. I believe artillery is like much better now, or like much more utilized. Than it used to be. Is that I true? I mean, in in world, we also used artillery pretty often, like mm-hmm. definitely more than in older games for sure. So yeah, and yeah. both in Rise and World, artillery is much more utilized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would be more inclined to try it then. But with uh, the nice thing about like blast longsword or like slime longsword, especially in three ultimate, like I, especially I feel so I felt so privileged going into portable third because in portable third you don't have any blast or slime or anything like that. Yeah. So tripping monsters takes much longer. Then I was oh, yeah. like, I was adjusted to for three ultimate because in three ultimate, it would be like, oh, I'd hit it a couple times. It would blast. It would fall. Yeah. Easy, easy. You game. always finish your combo. Yeah. Cause you'd be. Yeah, flinching. exactly. And then I'm, now I'm playing this new game and I'm like, I can't stop Nargakuga. I am so tired. <laughs> I just want this to be over. Bullfango just ran into me for the 12th time. <laughs> it's exhausting. Um, so what about uh, your thoughts on Rampage? You are not a fan, right? No, I'm not. Not not at all. I, I find it to be... Um, if it was just like one thing, like if, if one monster had a Rampage, I'd be like, okay, that's that monster's thing. But they, they made you do it like a lot. Um, like I think three times minimum, maybe you, maybe four. I you think it's think three. three times is a lot? <laughs> For a for a forced one, yeah. Um, like I mean, like I mean, I'm someone that will hunt Jen Moran twenty times. Like, don't get me wrong, I like sieges, and the Narwish siege was amazing. Yeah, what a great siege! Holy crap! And the Narwa siege complemented what the game was t- in such a great way. That's what that's what I love to see when it comes to like how they design some of this stuff. So like, rampages are fun. Don't get me wrong. Like, I will do a rampage with my friends if they want to do a rampage because it it it's fun in its own right, but. It, in a monster hunter environment it, for me it's like i'm playing like a weird cluster bad word uh tower defense game that i'm not uh i'm, I'm not a huge fan of now 
Um, it, it's fun enough in its own right, but not not for what I was doing in Monster Hunter. And I don't feel like it complement complemented Rise in any capacity, really. Not like Narwa did. Narwa was I couldn't believe how good Narwa was. I was like shook that the way that they they utilized the wire bugs for that. I I loved that. So I, much fun. I also think that the Narwa fight was was genius. I've 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 said it. Like I really love the um, the amount of like bullet hell almost that you get in the middle of that fight, and it really does mm -hmm. go after all of your mobility stuff. It is a little bit more frustrating for Gunlance if you're playing with a uh, ground splitter because the buff goes away when you sheath. So if you ever have to move oh, and you sheath yeah. your weapon, lose the buff, and then you have to like get the buff again. That was a pain. But like if you're playing mm -hmm. any other weapon, like that thing is just a blast to go through as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. But um, when it comes to rampages, I actually do think that they're kind of fun in their own right. But mm -hmm. it's one of those things that I think it's more fun if you're playing it with multiple people. Like if you're playing it solo, oh, yeah. I don't think it's nearly as much fun as as if you're playing it with multiple people. It, it It's it. It, I will say, like, I've, I said it in my thing, but, like, with four players in this game, it's very, like, anything's very hectic. Like, there's so much going on on the yeah. screen that it's very, like, cluttered for me. Even if you turn it down, it's still very cluttered and uh, distracting. Um, but especially in Rampages, um, you, you're, it's kind of a double-edged thing. Like, you, it's a lose-lose for me because if I go solo, there's less going on with my party members, but there's still a ton of monsters and there's so much more for me to do. And if I go in with four people, it's a little more fun and manageable but there's so much going on on the screen and I have no idea what's going on because everybody's like flying around and there's 20 Mitsutsunes attacking me and hitting <laughs> me with bubbles and stuff like that. I don't know. It, it, it didn't, it didn't vibe with me in the way that most monster yeah, Hunter concepts do. I, I, I did basically say that there's uh there's going to be, you know, with rampages, there's going to be two things. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. There's not going to be a middle ground. Mm -hmm. And you just yeah. happen to land on the field of people that didn't like it, which, like I said, I, I completely understand why. I, I personally still mm -hmm. like them, but, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's whatever. I yeah, I don't hate them, but, like, I could do, I, I would have liked to see something else, maybe. Bring Jen back. Jen, Jen would have been so good in Rise. Oh, my God. Could you imagine, like, wire bugging onto Jen so that you didn't have to wait for it to come to the edge of the ship or something like that? Like, that would be crazy. I think me and, and then, me and Gajin said Darren, right? It was Darren, though, he oh, said. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you remember Darren or Jen. When, when, yeah. Because we, we, were, we were doing the podcast now, and one of the questions that people always have for us is, like, which, mo which Elder Dragon would you like to see return uh, in Rise? Mm -hmm. And both of us just said, Darren Moran. <laughs> <laughs> Any any of the Morans would be great. Like they yeah. would fit so well with like the current gameplay style, and uh, they they would have to make them like a little more interactive for the wire bugs by just being able to like climb on them. And if you get launched off, you could actually like instead of just falling into the sand, you could pull yourself back on. Like how cool would that be? That'd be amazing. Yep. I, I just want to yeah. be on a, on a friggin' sand boat and going after the monsters. Like, oh, let's go, I know. jump on, throw bombs. Amazing. I know, I know. I'm the exact same way. It's one of my favorite sieges. <laughs> Um, what about the uh, the Apex monsters? What was your thought? Now that we actually got to fight them outside of uh, of the Rampage, what did you think about them? Did you think that, because I know that you did the review before the 2.0, yeah. so did you think that yeah. those are kind of like uh, enough of a challenge in terms of the, the difficulty ramp up? Because they are a little bit harder than other monsters. They're they're a little bit harder. They bring they bring some of the deviant mechanics and like kind of mix and match some of the subspecies mechanics in, I believe. Um like they mostly just come off as like deviants, but with a weirder yeah. color scheme. I, I personally think it would have been cooler to bring deviants just back. Like I loved the design of deviants. Bring Bloodbath Diablos back. That's like such a cool monster. Um, and bring like uh, Dread King and Dread Queen. Uh, but because like these monsters are kind of like already like that, but just with like what I find what I find to be like a, a less interesting overall visual scheme. Uh, but the fights themselves are really great. Like the fights are fantastic. Now that we've gotten to experience them outside of the the mess that can be rampages, I think like we really get to see them shine. They get that amazing roar that like actually like bursts your ears. It's kind of like a zenith roar in Frontier where it feels like you need like a new level of earplugs to even deal with it, you know? It's crazy. You can't capture them. Uh you can't uh you ha like you have to slay them and you get to can't see like them, any yeah. new you can't even ride them, yeah. So you have to see all that. You get to see all their new mechanics and stuff like that. It's basically a fight that is uninterrupted. Because like one, another one of my issues was that uh, if you want to use your silkbind attack, sometimes you'll like force the monster into mounting, and maybe that's like not the point in which you want to mount the monster. But now, now you have to, yeah. um, and so you don't actually have to worry about that with those monsters. So it's a very clean fight with a very like 
uh, intimidating monster with like these cool mechanics that uh, some people may not have seen. People that started in fifth gen wouldn't have never seen if they haven't gone back. Great fight. Like, uh, so 2.0 fixed like half my video. Half, they, they like watched my video and they were like, okay, quickly, quickly. Let's just fix this. Put it all in. Quick. Put it all in. Let's fix everything he said is like pretty, like, oh, he's right about this. He's right about this. Put it in. Put it in. Put it in. I was like, I was like, yes. Yes, Capcom. So, Let's go. So I find it interesting that you said uh, about the additional level of earplugs. What if I told you that if you just get triple buff with uh, with Insect Clave, doesn't matter. They'll go right Is through it. Really? It. Yes. That, see, that's funny. It, well, let me ask you, does HD earplugs, like does high-grade earplugs, like, well, they don't have high-grade earplugs anymore, right? Like how many levels of earplugs? It's Is five, it five, I think. I think it's still five, so yeah. It, if you if you have five, do you do you block I it? I don't know. I I I haven't oh. gotten. I don't I don't even know if you can get like five earplugs at this point. Because is there even it's an earplugs tough. deco? You can do it, but there is, but it's okay. a level three slot, so it's pretty yeah. Severe. So so it's hard. But like I, I just thought it was interesting because um, when I did my my insect lead build video, I went against Apex mm -hmm. Mizu and he did the big roar, and I was like, oh wow, really? Like just triple buff. It just that's completely it. blocks it. <laughs> wow, that that is surprising actually. Because like you would you would think it'd be like this like new tier of roar almost. Yeah, but it's would not. be which is very interesting. Like I always thought that was a cool mechanic in Frontier. Yeah, yeah I mean, they do have the new, the new tier of roar. Like, I know Rathos does it um, in the Rampage. Uh, he'll do a huge roar. And if you're far away enough, you're fine. But if you're not, like, you get stunned forever. But yeah. that's the point at which you need to hit him in order to cancel the attack. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I luckily like for us, the Rampages are so easy that it doesn't matter if he pulls it off or not. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Those, those things are, like, jokes. You literally just, like, just like the ballistas and cannons and like the machine gun that they give you are like so powerful. It's ridiculous. And then counter signal goes off and then like everything's just a joke. And so it's very weird. It, yeah, it, it was, it was, it's very weird. I don't know. Yeah. Like I like it enough. It's okay. So my, my final thing that I wanted to bring up um, was the Quest variety. So, like in Monster Hunter World, we had um, investigations, which I know that Gaijin is not a huge fan. How do you feel in regards to investigations? Are in, invest, investigations are like kind of like what we have now with the subquests, right? No, so, no, investigations no, 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 were no. like they would give you like a random quest, like go fight this monster, and you get oh, extra reward yeah. slots and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I forgot in, about that. In World, um, ba basically, their excuse for not preparing quests for us. <laughs> Yeah. It also, it also ruined the point of doing a normal quest because you'd get more rewards from yeah. I'm sorry. I'm 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 influencing <laughs> the discussion. No, no, no. It's up. actually it's very surprising hearing you be so critical of like that aspect because like like generally like I feel like you're a very optimistic person with like yeah. it's very it's very rare to hear you talk oh, he hates world. He hates it. <laughs> negatively about something. Really? I love it. No, I'm joking. no I love the game to death. <laughs> But I made four. I made a few, four videos, two of which only talk about the same thing, which was like the uh, the slap on designs. Right. I make one critical video, and they're like, "Oh my god, he was hating on World for yeah. years." I'm like, <laughs> "Well, it's funny. Like, uh, if I if I ever see somebody talk about you, it's usually about like like about this kind of like topic. It's about how like you won't criticize. Like, yeah. you're very optimistic. Yeah, everyone yells at me that I won't criticize, and then when I do, they're all like, "Oh, he yeah. hates it," or he he hates now it. <laughs> now he's got an agenda. I'm like, "Wow, there are things I don't like." Yeah. It's it, it's always that thing of, of the internet where it's like, you know, people will just look at one instance of something and it's like, he hates it. It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter if you've said a thousand good things about it. You said that one bad thing, which is why you get a lot of flack probably for your review as well. I would imagine. Right, Super? The Rise one was a little bit nicer, but like the, the I still get like, oh, that's the guy that hates world for like the world video <laughs> that I put out. Yeah, I get that all the time. I mean, mostly as a joke now from like my community, but like there's still people that will be like, oh, you. That's didn't you criticize? Don't you hate World because of yeah. such and such? And I'm like, no, I like World. I like Monster Hunter, so I like World. Uh, world was a good game. Uh, just what didn't wasn't my vibe as much as like a previous game. Yeah. Um, for investigations, uh, I didn't like. I didn't like. There was so much with World that I was by that point. I was like, well, whatever. Uh, so like, I didn't find those specifically to be super egregious. But they 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 weren't designed very well. I will say that. Um, mostly in just like. I remember like you couldn't even get there were, there were so many warnings at the time where you couldn't even get like tempered elder dragon investigations like you would miss out on them for a good while unless you unless you quickly picked up trails on the first tempered oh, Kieran yeah, you had to right, fight cuz right, right. yeah 
So you had to like you had to like make sure that you got enough tracks off of the tempered Kieran to get tempered elder uh, investigations. Otherwise, you would like rarely even see them. And like those were like crucial in getting uh, the stream stones or whatever so that you could augment. Um, and like realistically, like, there should have just been guaranteed quests that allowed you to get those things. They should have been tough quests that were challenges, but they gave you the things you needed to augment your weapon or something like that. And, and investigations were kind of like, um, I don't want to say a cop out. I, I feel like that's a bit too rude because I feel like they put them in for a reason, but um, they, they just felt like they were just there as like a means of like making the game go by faster. Like you, you can get more items. Like more rewards. So and this this leads into one of my rare criticisms of Rise, which I actually okay. do have criticisms, believe it or not. Because like Rise, this is like no your one, favorite no one believes right, now, right? it. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'm in love with it. But of course, I, I can criticize it. But um, one of the things that I I wish they would have did was investigations made it way too easy to get rare drops with the gold little. Mm-hmm. extra like the little gold stuff and the silver boxes like the rates for like a gem was like 12 or 21 percent or something stupidly high mm-hmm. the way they used to do it in the old games is that they would do an event quest where the monster would be harder he would be buffed he would be like 40 percent hit it's harder or has more health and mm-hmm. it wasn't the actual carve rates it was the quest rewards would have a higher chance of getting an orb so mm-hmm. there was an incentive to take on a harder version of the hunt why the hell have they not done that yet? Yeah. Both world they didn't do that. But why haven't they done that in Rise yet? I hope I hope they have it have it planned. But it's like like right now everyone wants purple orbs, or at least I thought so, for mm-hmm. Mag Magnamilo stuff. Why didn't at 2.0 they put an event quest in which there was like a super Magnamalo who was just the quest modifiers were just set in a way that it hits harder. It's it's a very tough fight. But the quest rewards have a higher chance of paying out a purple orb. No one would just immediately just switch over to that quest because it's harder. But yet it would offer you a, a reward in a way that you can get that rare item easier. And it it kind of it it feels like a missed opportunity to me. The fact that both World and it seems Rise are not doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just it would not be that hard for them to do. And I think it would be the perfect solution um, if if that is what they were trying to solve was the. The rare item drop issue. The, um, um, I hope they do it. The the one thing I, I kind of feel like I, I probably didn't phrase the question very well because it's late. But the one thing that I liked about investigations, one thing that I thought was really cool, is that you would get to see monsters in different locations. So like, for instance, right now, if you want to farm Almudron, you're going to be farming Almudron the Flooded Forest. You're not going to find him anywhere else because that's where he is. Like, that's it. You no, have that right. one location to fight Almudron. No, you mean Shrine Ruins? Um, yeah, when he, when he's with other monsters, yeah, he can appear in Shrine Ruins. Yeah, but like when you when you're actually farming for him, right? Like you're farming for materials. Like the default quest okay. takes you to Flooded Forest. That's where you're going. Oh, okay, okay. He can show okay, up in Shrine and Ruins and, and other places, but usually if you're targeting that specific monster, that's where he is. Which is one of the reasons why, like, I think they did something amazing with the Basil quest that it changes every time. Because, like, Basil, uh, yeah. you can fight him anywhere. Like, the quest, you do it once, and then it changes the location. The first time you fight him is in Sandy Plains. Next time you fight him can be Frost Islands, can be Lava Caverns, can be anywhere. I think that is oh, really wow. cool, and I wish that there was more of that. Because, like, you know, I'm if I'm farming, like, friggin' um, Almudron, which I've had to because the orb has been very elusive, uh, <laughs> I, I basically I'm always going to the flooded forest and it'd be nice to have a little bit of variety that's kind of what I meant because like most of the monsters now with the exception of basil they have their set locations when you're going to grind them and that's the only places that you can fight them essentially well I will say that I think that that aspect is cool like being able to fight a monster in a different area that you normally wouldn't see it is kind of a cool concept um, if anything if you wanted to like find like a middle ground and like a des- in a design that could like kind of remove like the or like bring back that idea of like event quests being rewarding in the sense that they give you better drops but uh also have monsters be in different areas you could always like it would be really cool to see the event quests take those powerful monsters and put them in different areas and then you get like the best of both worlds yeah be a really cool yeah uh, and then they can play around with like you know this one only allows one card or two cards like they can yeah they can get creative oh that'd be great yeah fun that's a great idea and while we're like it's like the essence of investigations almost while we're on the topic of uh, of events, did you guys notice uh, whether or not Narga seems to hit a little bit harder the the event Narga for the stickers? 
I haven't gotten a chance to fight it yet. I have been I've been stuck in portable third. I don't have time, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and and very kind, you know how many Nargos I've killed for my tutorials and my videos and testing. Okay. So like Nargos Fine. Kuga is like Teostra for me right now. Like I don't know. I would have to be hunting very lazily in order to get hit by that monster. I just I just, <laughs> here, I just here we go. Here we it's go. just I've danced with I've it's danced with it flex. so many no, no. times that no, it's no, just go like ahead. just get it out of your chest. Go on. I will I will say um in a in a similar situation with Nargakuga because I had to fight um you have to to fight Lucent Nargakuga you have to grind your HR really high and I didn't want to do that yeah. so I tried to fight the event one for like four hours Oof. I got really good at Nargakuga because of that four hours of grinding that event Lucent and then to to fight the Rise one the Rise one is like a very like old school version of Nargakuga yeah, yeah. so it it felt like a breath of fresh air to go in and fight that Nargakuga felt really good. Yeah. It's like coming back home. It, it yeah. It, it it's the same uh, rhythm. It's the same positioning. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I like it. I was expecting Great. Gaijin to just tell me to get good, but luckily we didn't yeah, go through. I mean, oh. <laughs> you could you could switch you could switch weapons. You could try a new weapon. Try a longsword, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's time nah. for you, Con. Nah. Everyone <laughs> else is doing it. Come on. Yeah, Peer come pressure. on. It's the, it's the hot thing right now. Oh, I can kill him just fine with the gun lights. I just felt that a few times that I got hit, it actually hurt more than I was expecting. I was like, ah, that that hit freaking hurt. So maybe they I, are. I will try gun lancer issues. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will try it soon, and I'll, I'll 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 make a note to look into that and see. Um, <laughs> I'm, cur I'm so curious. I'm curious if it does more damage. So now the final one for real, because I just thought of, of another one. What sure. collab would you like to see? Arise. Col like oh between uh oh man. Yeah, like we That's had Final question. Fantasy fourteen for World and we had yeah. Witcher three. The one that I didn't like in World was Assassin's Creed. I was just like, this one was so tacked on, like well, what the hell? <laughs> oh god. That's tough, man. I think I originally said I would really like to see a Dragon's Dogma collab. Oh my god. Yeah, it would be really cool, right? To fight like one like to fight like imagine fighting Gregory or something. Like yeah. that'd be so cool. <laughs> that'd be great. Um but uh, they actually did one. They did a collab for that in Monster Hunter Online. So if they decided to do that in Rise, I think it'd be really cool and like maybe give some interest in finally making Dragon's Dogma too. I think I think that would be great. I'd love to. And it's a Capcom IP, so it's there. They have the option. Dragon's would Dogma see that. would be friggin' amazing. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite games. I'd be game for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you know which one I'll I I want. <sighs> hmm. You why I I want an event quest so I can get a layered outfit so I can look like one of the daughters of Lady Dimitrescu. Oh, the Resident guy. Evil, yeah. <laughs> Re Eight yeah. would be great. Re Eight would be a great uh, crossover. It's it's a fantastic game and it's very uh what would the term be topical right now. Yeah, right? yeah and it's I mean? Capcom, so like do it. Mm -hmm. Which which yeah, monster do, do you think would like represent that? Of the ones that we have right now, I think oh. it would have to be a new one, because like we had Vol Hazak in World. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. We had Vol. Um, maybe Almadron would work for it, I would think, because he has like a, kind of a toxic element to him. When you're in his mud, it like deals damage over time. Maybe that could instead give you like the zombification effect again, mm -hmm. and give you a cool event for that. That'd be fun. Yeah, I don't know, but I just, I want it. You, you just want to dress up like one of the the witch sisters. Uh, one of the witches, exactly. At, at this <laughs> point. So so Superman, actually, I have a question for you that I wanted to ask. And this is going to sound like such a weird, random question. But okay. in your videos, yep. you do you have the parts where you're like behind mic and you're just talking. Like on, on like you are now in camera. Okay. And then you yep. have like the, the narrated parts, right? Yeah. And your audio is so damn crisp. And so beautiful <laughs> on the narrated parts. Do you like go into the closet and record those? Like, how do you get no, the audio to sound so good? It's here. Um, I uh, I basically have um, so audio bounces like off my front walls. So I put a bunch mm -hmm. of like kind of like what you have behind you, but on my front walls here. Because uh, that because like back there is like my audio is not going to be bouncing off of those walls as much because they're very far away. So that that's kind of what I have set up. And then I talk. Um, I talk, I, I, I raise my mic and I talk pretty close to it. And then I do a lot of heavy audio editing, editing in Audacity to get it to yeah, where it I, sounds, I like it. Sounds to be. really good. And I, it's just, I, I like the, the, the fact that you process the audio different on those parts. It gives a really nice rhythm to the videos. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I do. Uh, I, I'm very, 
would the word be? I'm very critical of my own voice and my audio specifically. Like yeah. I, I always notice in my videos little things that nobody ever points out to me. And I'm always like, I'm all, whenever I'm like, because like I fix all my audio and I go through an entire audio clip and like get rid of like little pauses and get rid of breaths and mistakes yeah. and stuff like that. So I always hear it at a very like high level that people might not hear it at. So I'm I'm always like, oh, people Jesus are gonna hear Christ. me. Like, yeah, yeah, they're like, no, like you're gonna hear that, you know. All I'm that just, stuff. I'm just thinking about like, because your your history of Moss Hunter videos, all of them are like 30 minutes plus uh, at least. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking of you it's going through those 30 minutes of video looking for breaths and sound. Like, uh, I was just looking for coughs in, the, in that yeah. one time. I can't even imagine. Like, okay, here's a breath. It's like Jesus Christ, that's insane. Uh Honestly, you get you get very good at it. There's like a trick to it. So like I, I have like my scripts right now and I have them in front of me. Right. And uh, I will I will read sentences. I do have to go through all of the audio, but I will read sentences with like no breaths guaranteed. Like it's in my head. Like I will not breathe when I'm reading this sentence and then I will I will stop to like breathe and I will keep going. So that makes it once you've edited the audio, you just kind of like listen in. And then like every so often you'll like kind of like glance over, see a mistake or a pause. You pause it, you clip it out. And then like they're, they're half hour videos, so it doesn't take too, too long, maybe like an hour or two. Um, but it, it, I, it, you get faster. It, it, it gets a lot easier after you you're very critical of yourself and you don't want people to think that you sound like I, I always think I sound like very nasally and stuff. So I try to like fix up my audio, make it as like nice and like raise the bass, raise the treble and stuff. <laughs> get rid of the echo if I can. I try to get rid of echoes because like you'll notice like in those history videos, you'll notice like some of them are more have more reverb than before. I recorded them in different yeah. areas or I tried new things. And there's a lot there's a lot of stuff like that that uh, I've I don't want to say I perfected it yet because there's always still like little things I want to fix. But uh, it's better now than it used to be. So I'm yeah. happy about that. No, I'm happy to call it out. It's just, it's good audio production's tough. I'm still trying to learn it, and and you've got it going on. So, <laughs> thank you. Your audio is always really good. You both of you guys have really good audio. So, well, thank I've you. always Mine noticed. Got I had a lot of problems with one. My room is only, it's only like what, like maybe seven by five. It's a really small room, which means echoes just go. They bounce off this place like mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. And then I went through a bunch of different mics, and I ended up going with the dynamic mic, and it's so much better now. Because mm -hmm. it does such a bad, it does such a much better job than like condenser mics, which pick up everything. Oh yeah, yeah that's what and I'm using so, right now is a condenser, and I actually want to upgrade to a dynamic mic in the future. Yeah, it's much better for vocal quality, but the the, the dynamic is really good at just cutting out some bullshit. So mm -hmm. I I found my happy ground, so to say. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. I I love this condenser mic because I can scream into it and it won't overmodulate. I love it. Yeah, what what are you using? I got a Sennheiser hand mic digital. Not oh, sponsored, nice, nice. Yeah. by the way. But I will take Not a sponsorship, Sennheiser, so call me. <laughs> that's, that, that's so funny. I actually, um, I uh, in one of my early history videos, I say something like, I mentioned, oh, in one of the Frontier videos, I mentioned NordVPN because I was talking about like being able to play the game by using a VPN. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm not sponsored, by the way, just so you guys know. And then like recently I did have a Nord sponsor. <laughs> so. I, I keep getting the email from them and I'm like, I'm so sorry. It's like, I know NordVPN is really good, but I have a subscription to ExpressVPN. Ooh. Oh, I'm happy with them. <laughs> <laughs> like I, that and I, I, I don't, I, I, luckily for me, uh, YouTube is just a hobby. It's not a living. Um, mm -hmm. So if I can get away without having to deal with that kind of stuff, then all the better. So I just don't, uh, yeah, it, don't it, do actually, it anymore. It actually takes a lot of time to write like an ad for them, even if it's yeah. like 90 seconds. It's crazy. But I couldn't believe how long it took. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So it's, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what, what, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was, so I have one Go more ahead. one more question for Super Rad. So like sure. <laughs> you're 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 going through like the history of videos, which I adore. Um, yeah. once you're done with the history of the weapons yep. and the games, do you have ideas on what the next series or the next things might be? Um, and if so, are are you willing to drop any hints or ideas or? I, I I open I openly talk uh, talk about some ideas. So um, a lot of people have been asking me to do um, the history of like specific monsters and how they've kind of changed throughout the generations. So I'm thinking about doing that. Um, uh, but it, th those would be the idea is to finish the weapon videos, and then I'm going to I'm definitely doing a Dragon's Dogma history video that's coming. 
Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if you're I aware, but wait. both me and Gaijin, we are crazy about Dragon's oh. Dogma. We're I think anybody oh, yeah. who's played Dragon's Dogma more than a few hours, you 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 instantly become an insane believer. And, yeah, and absolutely. Spirit. Absolutely. So that one's definitely coming. It's going to be probably like the first thing I do after the weapon history videos. And uh, oh, so look forward sense. to that. Yeah. And um I do want to do those monster videos. I have a I have a four part dot hack series that is only two parts in right now, so I need to finish that. Um, and then uh, I'm not completely sure what else would be after that. I, I definitely do want to do some other non monster hunter stuff while still doing monster hunter stuff. Yeah. Um, so Dra- Dragon's Dogma is an example. Struggle. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some maybe some Dark Souls because I'm a big Dark Souls fan. Maybe some JRPG stuff because I like some JRPGs. Hey, if um, but if I'm, you I'm, ever if you ever want to talk about Dark Souls. <laughs> oh well, let's see we got it you know we got the we got the collab already coming in it's gonna be Boom. sick gonna be, like, yeah. like you, need, you need to understand and, and, before monster hunter like that's all i did like i i probably mm-hmm. finished dark souls one so many friggin' times and oh, dark yeah. souls 2 played it to death dark souls 3 same thing bloodborne all of the souls games i've played them all to death pretty much awesome <laughs> yeah i'm, I, I'm, I, just, I, I'm oh, like a i'm like a i feel like a like a kid at a press event and I'm like trying to squeeze in my questions. With, <laughs> no, uh, go ahead. I'm, my I'm, celeb- I'm good. celebrity, but I'm also curious. Um, do you plan to play Monster Hunter stories? And if so, like, um, have you played the first one? I'm just curious about your thoughts on stories too. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Uh, it's, I like stories more than like almost the mainline games right now. <laughs> that stories is insanely good. I was so blown away. I only played uh, stories recently. I have a video on it actually, where I go over it and kind of my opinions on it um, and how amazing I think it is. So um, I highly recommend watching that. But um, I played it on the Android on my I, I played it on like an Android emulator um, with yeah. like a gamepad. And it was like such an amazing experience. It was oh, a fantastic yeah. game. Uh, some of my like like I'm pretty active on Twitter. It's like one of my main social medias. Um, and I some of my biggest engagement for before like I, I became where I, I am now was through me just posting each rare monsty I got. Being like, yo, I got uh, this nice. one, I got this one, I got this one. And I am like, I am so excited. I'm more excited for Stories 2 than I was for Rise. Like, Stories 2 is looking so good. The, the art style has amazing. been perfected. Yeah, graphically, I it's wonder fantastic. if everyone's going to be shocked. Like, come July, I think most of us are going to, like, literally put a hard stop pause on Rise and Pretty be much. like, yeah. I'm not playing Rise for a few months. I am going head in deep on Stories 2. Like, it's that yeah. important to me. That's my plan, because, like... I have like I have like kind of a semi schedule for streaming. I'm basically playing through. I've never played through Portable Third, so now I'm soloing Portable Third all the way through on stream. And um and then the plan was to like either like play something else after that or like move on to For You and solo For You. Um and uh, I told them I was like yeah, but like when July shows up, whatever I'm doing, I'm dropping so that you guys can watch me play Stories too. <laughs> nice. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited for it. it. And like all the monsters that they're adding, I'm, I'm so happy. Um, I really like how they've uh, changed the, me- they made the mechanics of weapons more unique. Like uh, hammer has abilities that add charges to it so that you can then do charged abilities with the hammer. And like Gunlance has like a, a gauge that it can also charge. Uh, maybe I'll actually be playing Gunlance in that one. Hey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stories we got. Because it actually looks really cool. <laughs> For a turn-based game, I was like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, I'll try it out. That's, that's super went, awesome. In, in the last trailer that they put up, they were just like, Basil, which is my favorite monster, and Gunlands. Yeah. So I was like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I was and, already and I sold the on gun- the game, but, you know. <laughs> when, when you see them using the Gunlands, he's, like, fighting a Plesioth, and I was like, oh. I mi- I missed the Plesioth because I saw Gunlands. So <laughs> I was like, I was, I was so shook you, by you, the Gunlands. You, you, first you had my wallet. Now you have my bank account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited for that game, too. Yeah, it's like, so excited. And... Uh, Gaijin, I would suggest watching that video because I'm. Um, I yeah, do talk about. I talk out. about how like oddly dark it is. Like that game is very it's dark. Very dark. Well, they killed someone's mother. Like right? yeah, that's the that's it's the crazy. thumbnail st- of the video. It just says mom's dead, and then it has like a bunch of like monsties. <laughs> I still haven't. Uh, I still haven't played stories because I wish they would release it on Switch. I'd play the crap out of it if they put it on Switch. I. I don't yeah. want to play it on a portable device. I don't want to mess around with Android emulation. So I'm just like. Uh, I just want to that's play fair, it on my Switch. Enough. It's like, be so good at, on the at, Switch, too. At, at the very least, while it seems like it is a continuation of the first game by a certain amount of years, I think you'll be able to play this, yeah, this yeah. sequel without like worrying yeah, about yeah. it. So you have that, at least, which is nice. Yeah. Should be fine. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, I think that's going to be it uh, for now because it is pretty much three in the morning for me. <laughs> and I, no. I feel so bad for you, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still so want to get some because otherwise we could be here speaking all night too. But uh, eventually mm-hmm. there will be file size restrictions as well. <laughs> but Oh, um, yeah, I have to upload this. <laughs> there's going to be links to all of Super Rad stuff in the description as well as Gaijin stuff. Uh, all of that will be in there. Uh, so you guys make sure to check out this uh, history of. What's what's the, the next history of that you're working on? I forget. I'm working on the Lance video right now. Ooh, the Lance. Mm-hmm. So that's that's going to be there's Gaijin's only, favorite. <laughs> yeah, there's only three weapons left right now. Lance, heavy bowgun, and light bowgun, and, and technically medium bowgun, which I will do a, a short separate video on. Yeah. But like, I look forward um, to that. Lance is unfortunately one of the least popular ones. Like, I, th- I think that's probably going to be the least popular one that you think, because because that's that's at least it, the vibe that I get from the community. Like, not a lot of people play Lance, unfortunately. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I I don't have a good gauge on like weapon popularity. I mean, like Hunting Horn was apparently like the least popular, which really surprised me for a, for a long time because I thought it was so interesting mechanically, and then it turned out to be like the least popular. So, um, Lance is the solo weapon. It's I think there's a lot there's lancers out there. It's just they're preferring to play solo. Yeah, I will say like honestly, like I've only written up to third gen for my script, but third gen added so much that made that weapon like very interesting i was yeah. like very surprised i was like oh wow they get like a they get like a guard point basically and they get a counter charge attack like what like this weapon's insane like this this weapon had like a crazy dedicated counter before longsword did like what the hell it's yeah. crazy so i am very excited to uh, have that one out uh, when, when does this video get released is it like the next day or the um, uh, the podcast it's tomorrow yeah Oh, or, it gets released tomorrow? Yeah. He's crazy. Oh, <laughs> your, your, your turnaround is nuts. Because like, it's 3 a.m., man. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to sleep, He's and crazy. then tomorrow I'm going to edit it and put it up. <laughs> okay, well, if He's you're crazy. watching this the day of release, I will be doing a subathon on Twitch for up to 28 hours if you guys want to check that out, too. So hey. that's gonna be, I'm going to be dead. I'm going to be playing Monster Hunter games. I'm playing Dark Souls games. Check it out. Stay healthy, though. I will do my... <laughs> I have water. Gatorade, and I have sugar-free Monster. We're good. <laughs> Gatorade and, and monster does not sound like Gatorade, <laughs> and I and I will have food, like good food. I promise. I promise. I'll eat a sandwich or something. I'll be good. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this episode of Third Fleet Podcast, make sure to hit up with a like button. Unless you're on Spotify, I don't know if there's a like button equivalent there. I never checked, but you know, we'll see you guys the in the next button. one. Um, stay strong. Stay safe. Come on, you have you have. Say happy hunting, Super Red. Happy hunting. Oh, I, was, I, was, I was giving it to him. <laughs> <laughs>